taking a lecture on what patient wants and the emotional. Well, it's going to be okay. 11 o'clock in a quite a few seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, we can good start morning. now. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Wishing you all a happy Sunday. And uh, this is the fourth in the series of the Ortho Armory. And to introduce today's topic and the speakers, I hand over to our Chief Moderator, Dr. Rajendra Chandak from Nagpur. Good morning, everyone. My, uh, we have an excellent faculty today, and we are really fortunate to have uh, Dr. Dr. Tanna sir would be joining a bit later. We have Dr. Madan Kapre. He is an ENT surgeon from Nagpur. Dr. Jawahar Jaitwa. Dr. Kumar Shantanu Anand, Dr. Gurwa Reddy from Sunshine Hospital, Hyderabad. Our moderators are Dr. Manoj Pahukar, Dr. Arjot Singh, Dr. Rajiv Raj Chaudhary from Surat, and Dr. Ashish Farnis from Mumbai. No, sir. Uh, we are thankful to Dr. Ashok Sham and Dr. Neeraj Bijlani to allow us to conduct this armory series where different topics uh, of day-to-day -day importance are taken up in the uh, series. Today, we are discussing about achieving somewhat more efficiency in our OPD conduct. See, OPD is our uh, uh, time where we counsel our patient, we interact with patient, and we develop a deep bondage of patient-doctor relationship. And giving a lot of good inputs on this topic, we have an excellent faculty. And we will be having how we have structured this webinar is, Initially, we will be having seven lectures. After each lecture, there will be one or two questions so that the topic is well understood. And at the end of several lectures, we have a panel discussion where common questions will be discussed at the end. So can I invite Dr. Kumar Shantanu Anand? Dr. Kumar Shantanu Anand is from Purnia, Bihar. He is a AO faculty and is Secretary of Foot and Ankle Society. Sir, can you please share your... Uh, screen he'll be talking uh, he'll be talking on smart tips in opd counseling and uh, this is what we really daily need welcome uh, dr kumar he is muted we are not getting your voice sir Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you now. Well, yeah, I welcome. Can... Yeah, welcome. You can, you can see my presentation as well? Yeah, we can see your presentation. We can hear you very well. Please oh, go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, first and foremost, I'm very thankful to the entire team, especially to my dear friend, Mahosh Pahukar, who has given me this opportunity. So, to get on with the topic and to set the ball rolling, we are discussing today something of utmost importance because when the patient comes, our first interaction with the patient is in OBD. And as they say, the first impression is the last impression. I would say that first impression may not be the last impression, but it is still the lasting impression. So in this day and age, when quite a few of our patients come with a lot of preconceived notion and prejudices, and the internet and the doc Google doesn't helping matters. It is very important to interact with our patient in a nice way and to make them understand their problem in a very positive atmosphere. I have stressed the word positive atmosphere. Right, so going ahead. Yes. So OPD counseling is basically A, B, and C. A, of course, is the appearance and the dress code. B is our body language. <laughs> to, if you look at the curtain on the right, we can impress the patient with a lot of medical gobbledygook, but that doesn't really help. So if we talk of appearance, there's a picture on our left and there's another one on our right. On our left, what we can see are two of our harried colleagues. And that is the most common scenario in a populous country where the patient-doctor ratio is really very poor. And they, in spite of putting their best foot forward, they are not able to really be very positive. 
If we look on the right side, look at the picture of the face, a smiling face, a nightly come here, a good tie and a good dress with a good ambience. So that is the appearance of the OPD, which sets the bowl rolling in a positive sort of manner. So appearance is of utmost importance. Body language. Now body language, uh, uh, we can speak and communicate ourselves, but before we start speaking, the patient, any other person looks at us and what we say from our body, from our looks, from our hand, what we say matters a lot. Look at the picture on your left. There's a big line. People are disinterested. Many of the patients are looking at some other direction. The doctor is busy looking, pouring into his uh, book or his copy or his prescription. He may be very worried about the number of patients that he has to see. On the right, you can see a doctor with an open hand, looking right into the eyes of the patient, smiling. So the body language on the right is what is desirable. So we have to strive for a body language which is positive, which is communicative, which shows the patient that yes, we care. Now coming to communication. These are a few things that I have noted down and I'll try to explain them one by one. The first thing is when the patient comes, he generally comes with a lot of anxiety and fear. We have to be positive. We have to put things in right perspective. And basically we have to allay the anxiety and fear. That doesn't mean that we have to uh, paint a rosy picture, but we have to put things in the right perspective because the glass can be half empty. It can also be called half full. So our attitude should be half full rather than be half empty and let the patient not become a nervous wreck. So a positive language, a positive body language, a positive appearance adds to the effect of allaying the anxiety and the fear of the patient and the patient may feel better. And a happy patient recovers well, we all know. Yes, listening. Is as it is important to speak, similarly it is important, probably even more important to be a good listener. So who is a good listener? Where the eyes are watching. You're all ears. You are giving the patient, you're turning towards the patient side, giving him your full attention. We are not endeavoring to say something. So our lips are closed, hand are still. So hand are not fidgeting. We are positive. We are all ears. So be a good listener. Keep our feet silent, no foot tapping and anything of the sort and be a good listener. And another thing, it is said that the most important sound to any person on earth is that of his name. So while interacting with a patient, it is good to be pleasant to the patient and call him or her by name. We have to put a little effort in looking up into the prescription and trying to remember a name. So whenever we speak to the person, we speak by name and thereby adding a personal touch. Yes, the other point that I feel is very important is be empathetic and not sympathetic. So what is the difference? Sympathetic is when you put yourself on a pedestal and say, okay, all right, all right, we can understand you are, you are in a problem. But being empathetic is feeling his, feeling his uh, fear, feeling his concern, and sharing his pain. So that is what the curtain says, that we have to be empathetic, not sympathetic, yes. And yes, patient may come and they may ask all kinds of silly questions. So no question is silly in the OPD consultation. The patient may ask and pour his heart out and in the process may ask something very silly as well. And we have to really be very, uh, I mean, pathetic that I said, we do not need to far frown and not make a fun in any sort of way. Other thing, we don't have to instill any kind of fear in patient's mind. You see, a problem when painted out of proportion will become very big, very problematic, like a life-threatening problem. It will become life-threatening problem. So we have to keep ourselves away from this tendency and no, do not hurry. We can be quick, we can be efficient, but we need not be hurrying while seeing the patient. Other thing, we have to explain the patient, explain to the patient the treatment, 
but no need to overdo it no need to put so many ifs and buts no need to put so many rarest of rare complication we have to be realistic but let's not overdo it and then last but not the least we have to give our patients some time some space they can go back we do not have to sell our surgery like in a joint replacement surgery we do not have to sell it let them earn it let them ask for it we have we can suggest everything and give the patient time a space so that he can go and think over it mill over it and come back and ask for it yes that is the stark reality of our country it is overcrowded with patient this picture i have taken from times of india where an ipd an inpatient area patient is shown in what is the picture in all, most of the medical colleges in crowded areas but still we need to have a heart and be good to our patient and give them a very positive uh, overall experience therefore thank you so much have a great day great week month and a wonderful 2021 thank you so much thank you thank you shantanu that was a wonderful lecture and with uh, pertinent tips of looking into the eyes of patient and having a counseling session that was really uh, great manoj you have any questions for uh, shantanu unmute yourself manoj manoj you are uh, it seems you are muted uh, rajiv raj you wanted to say something yes yeah, fantastic presentation for any well i think probably looking into the hello. eye hello looking into the eye yeah uh, can be a very cultural thing yes you see yeah. there were people who were arrested in the us after the 911 attack and uh, the the twin tower attack these were arabs and the case in the court was they did not look into the eyes of the of the investigators so probably they were guilty while the while these uh, arabs said in our culture authority is authority we can't look into the eyes of an authority we are always taught to look down so probably we have to have a very measured way look a little leave a little look a little because if she's a beautiful girl and shantanu if you are staring at her her husband will have you have your neck in your hand so although i will probably not help staring but there is a difference in the staring and looking into the eyes we can look gently with a crinkle in our eyes so we i never mean to be staring at my patient but looking at us gently in a reassuring way that's what i meant thank you sir yeah. any sure. any so at this point any any input from dr madan kapre sir no that's fine i will have something to say when i talk in the next okay. okay 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 perfect if there are two options that you can provide to a patient like if there is a humerus shaft fracture you can treat it conservatively you can operate it so how do you counsel them do you do give them options or do you tell your preference or do you decide for them yes that's a very good question as far as uh, sharp humerus fracture is concerned i'll definitely in most of my patient i give a picture of conservative therapy as well as a picture of operative therapy we also have to look at the patient if the patient is elderly and the sharp fracture is comminuted and the patient is very hefty and there is a big fatty arm so we really cannot treat that patient in conservative manner whereas a transverse fracture which is a stable which can have a stable reduction in a uh, suitably not i will not say lean and thin but a physically appropriate patient can be treated other matters are like uh, availability of money and other things so we have to say and give the patient a correct picture so i always give the patient a correct picture also suggesting sometimes they will ask me what do you think is right for me then i very gently say this is what i think and this is what you should do so your sincerity and your honesty comes across to the patient and they they make their own decision taking your good advice into account thank you so much Thank you, Shantanu. Jawar Jethwa sir would like to comment on yes. this topic: conservative versus uh, surgical. I just wanted to say regarding the gesture. I mean, the body language. Yes, sir. It's very important. But you get feedback from your staff or from your friend or somebody who is not a patient. 
we forget to get feedback whether my body language was good or bad we never take a video of our own you know like singing a song you always take a real sense and you listen yourself to improve so very important thing is that sometimes some bad habits some bad gestures they remain whole life and you have never taken a pain to correct it because you have no feedback uh, accepted so that is something very important yes sir let, let us listen to dr guru reddy for uh, this dr guru can you please uh, uh, make your video uh, yeah. on yes sir yeah 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 yeah, yeah so, it's very uh, of course a lot of the things will be repeated in yeah. the next yeah. slide also yeah i got a, a one or two very personalized uh, way of getting into the uh, patient psyche because you cannot expect the patient to take a decision your 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 net uh, you got to lay the things on the table end of the day when the patient says to me i would say if she is my mother i would operate okay that is a very standard emotionally very powerful phrase okay. and it, because a lot of the times i don't do trauma but my people do mm -hmm. a lot of people come to me for a, a trauma uh, reference then i would say 80 year old 90 year old they say that sir the patient ka to there are complications then i say i would rather get my mother dead on the operating table than on the bed with bed sores pneumonia and all this stuff that is a very powerful statement a lot of the patients take that okay perfect ashish you would like to comment on conservative versus surgical options how do you convince uh, how do you tell them the scientific way yeah so i i agree with dr reddy and uh, you know basically uh, you, our confidence in the procedure passes on to the patient and the patient can sense that Okay. so even if we are trying to extend that indication and we are on shaky grounds the patient can sense that you know ye uh, convincing lagta nahi hai and then they will go for a second opinion that is what happens so i think looking into the patient's eyes and giving him that empathy rather than a sympathy ki are tumhara tod gaya hai and now you know you are going to be out of a job for one month and yeah know. ashish has got a very relevant point the last thing you can do to yourself in a negative way is not to be certain in front of the patient If you are not assertive, even if you are bluffing, you should be assertive. <laughs> the patient should get that confidence. This guy he knows what he is doing. Or I mean, I have seen some consultants. They talk for half an hour. End of the half an hour, the patient doesn't get that feel that this guy knows something. So they are very uncertain. So that's not the way to go. No, I fully agree. I fully agree. That's why I said that it need not be overdone. It has to be done to the right amount only. Yeah, okay, of course. Yeah, that is yeah, the yeah. right amount, wrong amount, and optimization is entirely subject to, depending yeah. on your personality, patient's personality, the surrounding things. Let us say if the patient is a mother-in-law of a, a cardiologist friend of yours, your your approach will be entirely different. Yes, yeah. very very dynamic, yeah. very dynamic. Yes. Yes. yes, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for those inputs. Now let us move on to the next lecture. Now I invite uh, Dr. Madan Kapre. who is director of neeti clinics by the time sir please share your screen he is a lifetime achievement awardee of fnho and of the otolaryngologist of india he is national president foundation of head and neck oncology founder of the national president thyroid surgeons of india and he has a long association had a long association with professor marwa that is how he is well connected to orthopedics and he knows lot of orthopedic terminologies so sir please we will welcome you for your talk on emotional management of opd patient and what actually patient wants can we fulfill those things thank you sir welcome well thank you very much rajendra at the outset i ask for benevolence from all your expert panelists and your listeners because as you rightly said i am not the orthopedic although i come from the same stable where the orthopedicians were trained long back in 70s that is under the guidance of uh, professor dr vikram marwa and then we had a clinic together for nearly 15 years so that is my claim to be friend of orthopedicians uh, at the same time say whatever i am saying probably would apply to most of the situations let's take the history of opd where did the opd began where the terminology came actually came back way back into 17th century where patients were counseled in a hotel i want you to mark that word they were counseled in a hotel where the treatment was explained and argued now the word hotel will come back little bit later into my talks 
But mind you, it was not an hospital. The OPD were run into a hotel. Now, what is the OPD? Let's decide that. And it is a place where you actually don't give any therapy, but it is mostly you schedule yourself for some hours of the day to spend with your patient explaining and telling them, but there is no IPD and it's only about the diagnosis and talking. What the word diagnosis and talking. Now let's see what the OPD is like in the West when you take the emotional aspect. That's how the OPD is like in the West. I'm not taking this picture from the from the Google or one of the affluent hospitals in America. Look at what they look in our country. It's not comparable. It's a college where I trained myself. Look at another district general hospital, not very far off from where I practice. It is again not comparable. And therefore, this is, of course, we all know PD Hinduja Mumbai. Look at their affluent OPD. And look at this mediocre or modest OPD of mine. So what I want to stress the point here, that when we want to talk about OPD, the ambience across the board in our country and what the books say is not the same. So when I Googled up to see this talk, uh, frame this talk, I realized that nothing can come from the net. It has to come from your heart. And then say, look within. Now, what does the patient really want when he comes to the OPD? He wants clean, healthy food. He doesn't want the ambience of a, a big hotel in Dubai, or he doesn't want even a roadside cafe where he's scared whether the food is good or bad. So what is our job is to create an ambience in the OPD, which is just about right, where he feels that he is getting nice, clean, healthy atmosphere. And emotional management, that's a tough ask. But if you ask it, it's an ability to really accept successfully and control one's feeling. That's the definition of emotional management. It's a skill. And here we are going to cooperate with the patient, train him into accepting the situation and act positively. What the patient wants? There are some unspoken anxieties when he enters your clinic. Is it a disease which is going to kill me? Is it going to maim me for the rest of my life? It is going to disfigure me, particularly in my field, where I'm doing a lot of head and neck cancers. Will it create a social stigma on me? And financially, will I be set back financially or my work, will, will I lose my job? Can I do my job properly? What does the patient want? He really wants the point stressed very well in the earlier talk, is unhurried attention. He's always anxious when he enters, will doctor listen to me? Will I be able to tell my symptoms? You see, a lot of your patients come back with written down things. And it is very silly to say, oh, give me that paper, I'll read it for you. And just get on with it. No, the man has spent some time to write that down, to have a respect, to reciprocate your feeling and give him back the respect and answer him, tick mark one by one and go along with him when he reads out what he has brought with him. And of course, in case I forgot, a patient will say, Doctor, I might have forgotten something. He said, don't worry, ask me again, plenty of time with us. And maybe give him a chance to tell him the symptoms again. Now look at it, the confidentiality, what the patient wants. I'm showing you this picture from my own OPD where the old man sitting there has an oral cancer. And he with him, have got two people. Now I must be understood, understanding that who are these guys? One is his son, the other one is his son-in-law. It's not the same thing. So he doesn't want all of the things which are going to tell to be exposed to his son-in-law. Maybe he wants them to be told to his son. So to quickly latch on to it, that what am I talking and what is the confidentiality? And in that confidentiality part, a lot of people don't want their diagnosis to be, their, their diagnosis to be disclosed to the people they don't trust because there may be some implication. I told you, one of my patients, and he's from Calcutta, he came to me saying that, Dr. Mere Gale me I looked at the throat, there was no machika kata, obviously a big growth. But he wanted me to play along with this machika kata. And the reason was, he had five son-in-laws who were pouncing on business. He didn't want them to know that he has got a cancer and maybe a very limited future. Some of the questions which patients do have on their mind can I tell him that I have a whiskey at night? Can I tell him all about my bad habits? Or can I tell him about my psychiatric problem? They are very worried. And this puts them very emotionally onto a back foot. Be open, be open-minded. And I remember my rounds in England days that on the ward, patients were actually given their daily requirement of alcohol without the need to be shy about it. Because one of the big things that may happen post-operatively 
that you take away their alcohol quota every night they have by saying, oh, no, 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 my hospital doesn't allow any alcohol and you will have a problem on your hand. Then concern for the family. We, I mean, this point very well said. It is not sympathy. It is empathy. You are not God Almighty above. Oh, my God, you've got this very poor fellow you are. But you be very sympathetic and, of course, do have the concern for their privacy. They may want to take some things, some advices and discuss, please talk to my mother. Common advice, don't tell my mother. She is very, very weak. She will not tolerate it. It's not true. But at the same time, do respect that and play along sometimes. Now, what does the patient want? He wants to know the bills. He wants to talk about the policies. And the other thing which is happening more frequently now, and this is happening in the metros where a lot of uh, ITO people are working and say, will doctor take an undue advantage of my financial or social status? Rich man, poor man, God's man too. And my philosophy is be equal to all. Then coming to the COVID part of it, in the body language we talked about, we are creating modern times impediment. We look at the computer, we don't look at the patient. We are more interested in making the data into our stream. We also have a bell ringing all the time. And I've seen people, I've seen consultants who actually put, this is happening in the metros where the pressure is time. They put the clock and say, every 10 minutes, new patient. And it's a sand clock working, ticking there. And the patient comes so they turn the clock down. He says, second consultation begins. Please do not do that. Avoid the temptation of saying, oh, my secretary or my fellow will explain this to you. They have come for you, not for your secretary or not for your fellow. And again, these COVID protocols, I'm deliberately showing this picture, they create a barrier between you. I mean, look at me sitting there, wanting to see my patient with all my gear of COVID. Then there is a transparent screen and there is a shield and the patient is also similarly put, distances your patient. So it is not distancing. Please don't distance. Follow social distancing, but don't distance your patient because he doesn't want it. And this is the last slide of mine where I'm sharing with you my OPD in the area where I am famous to be working with the thyroid, this is my Chikaldara Megat scheme. This man approaches me and he expects these things from me. He wants me to be honest, the clarity of my decision, wants the reassurance, and above all, he wants my trust. May I humbly suggest to this August audience, we've got a lot of things more to come. We must, in terms of what patient wants from me, if I deliver them emotionally, because that's my topic or my work, I would say, sit at the level of the patient. A lot of people have a tendency to have a very high chair for themselves. And they have a huge chair. It's a body language, something covered in the earlier talk. And the patient has very mortally low-lying tables. So that creates you in a higher position than your patient. Please avoid that temptation. Have a chair which is exactly the same as that of your patient and have a good eye contact. Be focused. Don't talk to people. We have a habit of taking phone calls. Oh, I'm so busy. I got umpteen number of phone calls coming. Don't be in a rush to take. Put it on a mute or give it away. Put that phone call called mobile away from you so that you have focus. Use the language. You see, I have practice in Nagpur and a lot of my patients are coming from Madhya Pradesh and they have a different accent and different language. If I can latch on to that accent and language, I create a, a direct contact with them, ah, ye meri baat sunta hai, ye meri baat samajta hai. In my field of thyroid, because the recurrent nerve is very close and we are worried about the policies, a drawing helps me. I don't know how it works for orthopedic. Also, we have an urge, don't intercept your patient because emotionally you get traumatized. If you insult him, if you suspect his, his symptoms might be allowed. And second and the last, but not the least is, don't tell him that you are very busy and you are pressed for time and your patient is the most precious thing at that point of time because he has come to you from a long distance, sparing a lot of his time also. So you must reciprocate your time. Again, I thank you for your valuable and listening. And maybe I'll take some questions on what I said. Again, thank you all very much one more time. Thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kapre, sir. Uh, that was wonderful. And with those good tips, uh, they are really uh, nice tips for all of us uh, practicing. Now, on the point of reassuring the patient, so when you have a difficult disease which has a lot of implications, so how do we balance between the scientific advice of uh, um, complications and the reassurance that everything should be fine? So, uh, say for example, in our orthopedic, when we have a patient with a fractured neck femur, we have to warn them about avascular necrosis, non-union, everything. 
and and the patient wants reassurance that everything should be all right sab theek ho jayega so how do you balance uh, those things i will draw a analogy or i will try to paralyze that segment because i cannot be speaking on fraction neck femur yeah. and necrosis yeah. yeah. but i could talk about the oral cancers where my most of the work is and when the patient comes to me with oral cancers and i have given everything that what is going to be the future life for him and what are going to be the morbidity will be there and the patient then ask on a similar line like uh, dr gaur already said earlier uh, i would say on the first set samne se sher aaya hai hum usko sher khan boliye sher singh boliye sher ji boliye mala pehnaiye aarti kariye wo to aapko khane wala hai agar aapko bachna hai to ulta hamla bol do aur agar aap ulta hamla karte ho to jeet jaoge hum tumhare sath hai we will tell you all the armories we give all the armors to fight the disease with i am your friend i will be fighting with you but decision and the fighting is done by you because if you don't fight you won't be an ostrich agne se kuch nahi hoga piche se khayega i mean i talk something like this for my oral cancer patient but above all i was latched on because that exactly what i said to my patient thou shall not do something which i shall not do to your friend or your family and that's what dr reddy said a while ago i will say if it was my family my brother i will do this operation that right. creates a lot of impact Yeah. I'm fully yeah. sold on that point. Yeah. Thank you so much. Manoj, you wanted to ask something? Manoj, internet uh, appears to be a bit uh, hung up. Uh, yes, Kantanu, you wanted to say? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, so, sir, that is a beautiful question that you have asked. And I'll put the example of uh, spine fracture as well as fracture neck of femur. Right, <laughs> right. absolutely. Yes. सो अ पेशेंट हु इज पैराप्लेजिक बिकॉज ऑफ ट्रॉमा ट्रोमेटिक पैराप्लेजिया जब उसकी सर्जरी होनी होती है द पेशेंट विल इनवेरिएबली आस्क एंड इट इज क्वाइट राइट द पेशेंट इज बाउंड टू आस्क मी सर पेशेंट ठीक हो जाएगा ना विल द पेशेंट बी ओके आई वेरी हम्बली से ब्रदर आई के नॉट गिव यू दिस गारंटी एंड सो के नॉट एनी ऑफ द सर्जन ऑन द फेस ऑफ दिस वर्क बट देर इज वन गारंटी दैट इफ यू डू नॉट डू द सर्जरी डू नॉट डू द रिक्वायर्ड सर्जरी there's a 100% guarantee that the patient will not be well he will not become well but on the other hand if you do the surgery there is a chance that he will become well he may not become 100% well but there is a chance so unless you give yourself a chance you will not be okay as far as fracture neck femur is concerned yes it is very important that we let him know all the complications possible complications including the incidence of avn because if we do not and god forbid if he has avn in future he'll come back he'll think that the either the doctor didn't know that this could happen or there was something in the wrong something wrong in the treatment that's why it happened so in the initial phase itself we need to explain it put things in right perspective that in spite of the perfect surgery perfect re- reduction and perfect fixation this is a possibility and you have to be ready of this possibility but this has to be uh, backed by the data that it doesn't happen to every patient and you have a better chance of healing than chance of not healing so you need to take yourself that chance thank you on that point of uh, reassuring any points uh, dr jetwa sir how do you reassure when there are tricky situations and when they ask the last question sab sab theek ho jayega na usually i give one or, or two uh, uh, examples that look so and so was having very bad condition but he is still moving and it is already 5 years and i had been to his uh, one of the celebrations so you pick up some good stories tell them and that will increase a very good hope in them although it may happen may not happen but give some example by which uh, they feel like yes there are cases you get a very good recovery so that is very important right yeah manoj you wanted to say something Yeah, I just wanted to ask Dr. Kapre sir uh, whether you you change your approach if you see a kind of a patient who is coming from a village, uh, somewhat illiterate, and if a very educated or a very uh, person who has done uh, some search, and uh, how do you approach uh, a difference between these two kind of patients while counseling? Exactly, a very good question. the anxieties or the fear that a urban patient has and a fear that a rural patients are are completely different anxieties 
the patient coming from the rural area has got some other questions on his mind. He wants to know, firstly, how long do I need to stay? How long yeah. does it cost? And how long is going to be my morbidity? Can I work back into my rural environment? The man coming and he has not done much research, although that is changing. He hasn't gone on the net, he hasn't gone on the uh, uh, sort of uh, scrutinizing whatever the symptoms are. Urban patient, on the other hand, is a smart guy. You see, he only has to travel another kilometer to seek another consultation with some another doctor. So you always yeah. have that in mind that for him, another consultation is only a few hundred rupees, whereas he has already done the research people. So that's something which you always carry on your mind. Never give any ambiguous statements because he's going to latch on to it. It's a very common knowledge that after full counseling done, the patient will pour out a file in front of you, but so this is a very tricky situation you fear you may land into. The other thing is, the question he says, he's already done his homework. He knows what he has got wrong. Somebody has told him some surgery. He's only coming to you for second surgery. Now, two things can happen. Either you agree with him or you disagree with him. In case you disagree with him, do it very respectfully. That's my suggestion. If you disagree with me, the first chat and do not pay respect to him, you never know the first doctor who has advised surgery. Maybe his brother. Maybe his brother. And then you are in a soup because this man is going to tell him, Are you talking about the doctor? Are you talking about to be very respectful and say, oh, hey, that's one way, but I defer. It's my way. And I quite get the point of Dr. Jetwa, who just mentioned, that gives some examples. I think it's an excellent idea. I do that. I run a club called Oral Cancer Survivors Club. And then what do you say? That look at these guys. Or maybe there is somebody in the ward. Somebody was recently at the surgery. Maybe he's waiting in the outpatient. I tend to let them interact with each other. And that creates a very positive feeling in getting them prepared for the battle ahead. Because you are not fighting the battle for them, and neither they are battling, fighting the battle themselves. You are together into that big war. War against my field is cancer. But then you feel reassured that there is someone with me. I think that's the way I handle it. Urban patients are very notoriously disrespectful for whatever you say. Yes. Raise your own image into place by saying, it is, and somebody said a while ago, I mean, Dr. Shyam said from, uh, I don't know, uh, the first speaker. Yes. I can't, uh, he said that don't sell it, let them buy it. I think that's an excellent phrase he used it. All of our surgeries, they them buy it. We are not salespeople. They must feel they need it. I don't need it. That's right. the thing with the urban people. Right. Dr. Guruva Reddy, your points when the patient says, uh, uh, are there going to be any complications? Everything would be all right. Do you reassure at the end? What is the, your last sentence? How do you convince them? I, I got a, a talk called Humor in Medicine, uh, which I enjoy giving it and uh, people enjoy it, listening it also. In that, there is one thing called IPS, what we call Indian Patient Syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> These IPS people, you explain to them 30 to 45 minutes, that the chance of survival are only 5%. They will listen to that. And end of the day, they say, sir, sub ho jayega na. Yes. <laughs> that, that's the last sentence they would always come out. Yes. So fortunately, in my field, joint replacements, uh, I don't deal with uh, morbid patients. But I think you have to be truthful. But at the same time, you cannot uh, give them false hope. But at the same time, you cannot tell that you will die on the table. So you got to balance your words. Death should not be at all. You can say life-threatening, or you can say that something serious. You should not say what is that serious. So death word should never be uttered into the patient or relatives consulting in the open. Never. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ashish, you are uh, uh, counseling points for difficult situations. Uh, so I mean, I got to follow a talk also. So some points will be got, but. Uh, I usually start uh, the conversation by saying I've got some good news for you and bad news for you. So as Dr. Jetwa said, there is always some good news in that uh, this thing. You know, if it's a humeral fracture, yes, the good news is that you know you have a humeral fracture without a radial nerve palsy or without a compartment syndrome. So try to find some good news within the bad news that the patient has. And when he asks for the bad news, then you say that yeah, you probably require a surgery. You will be out yeah, of okay. uh, employment for a week or ten days. Yeah. I actually yeah. wanted to ask a question to Dr. Capre. Yeah, please. That 
you know as a junior consultant or uh, uh, beginning of our career and when we foresee that we'll be having a career for 20 to 30 years we always sort of idolize uh, senior orthopedic surgeons and some of them who do a day long opd and they operate in between the opd so they will just stop the opd for a while go quickly finish a surgery their registrar or someone is closing up and then they come back and then the patients are waiting in the opd and quite uncertain ki Uh, whether he is going to come back within an hour or whether he is going to come back in 45 minutes or so so do you think that uh, impacts the patient's uh, psyche or it actually adds to the aura of the surgeon <laughs> it's a, it's a two way sword uh, it does add to the aura that they know that this man is busy and they know that somebody has trusted him with their surgery so maybe i can trust him too so you coming out of the opd uh, ot and coming into the opd is a, a a positive impact upon your patient in terms of raising your state in their eyes as a dependable surgeon at the same time having said that when it comes to their own turn they don't want you to be rushed or hurried so you must say i am finished with my surgery i got plenty of time to talk to you now you please come and talk to me so give them that feedback that you don't have surgeries to go to let them not feel that you are waiting for the second patient to be anesthetized and i'm seeing them in between the two because that happens with me also of the time somebody is there under the anesthesia and say oh please come please come he's he's intubated so avoid that feeling to be transferred on to your patient that i am in a rush to go back to you and you say you are just as important as a man in the ot i respect both of them equally and that's how you translate and you have to do a lot of drama there you have to be very self Yeah. 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 We are all trying to sell yeah. something yeah. without saying we are selling it. Yeah. What we are Thank selling you. is our persona, and Thank they have to say that okay, I'm not rushed. I have plenty of time. Do some antique things which will make them feel that he is not in a rush. You just say, oh, you know, you talk to your colleague, say, ah, oh, sit down, let's have some time, or maybe uh, some tea, or you you take some your own idea, but let them not understand that you are in a rush to go back again to the OT. That's the key. Thank you so much for those wonderful inputs. Now we would have the third lecture from Dr. Rajiv Rai. Uh, Rajiv Guru already wanted to say something. Yeah, Guru, yeah. please go ahead. <laughs> please, sorry, yeah, I missed that. You, 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 you. I thought you are addressing that to me. I see 150 OPD every day, oh, yeah. and I do 20 surgeries a day. That is my load. I do exactly the same thing. I run up and down the stairs. My theater is on the seventh floor. My OPD is on the ground floor. I do a lot of uh, balancing act. but as i said you got to have uh, so much of support services to do that sort of act right. you have to have at least good registrars again another thing i should if you see if you boil down to that one the pending decision making time with the patient is only 5 minutes yes and rest of the time is cosmetic that can be done by your registrars nurses counselors so if you got that team very powerful so the total patient will have one hour time with all the team but you have only 5 minutes of your time okay. but you got to optimize that then you are a winner because once you go up in the practice there is no way in india you can say that i won't see opd on monday i will see opd mm -hmm. only on twice no it won't happen and i want you to reach that stage where you will see opd 6 days a week still running out of time <laughs> yeah so so your mantra is uh, develop the support system team absolutely sir yeah, yeah. thank absolutely. you thank you so much yeah so uh, now I, i would like to invite dr rajiv raj for his lecture on role of counselors we are all pressed for time rajiv can you please share your screen by the time sure so, yeah so we are all pressed for time every time every day day in and day out in orthopedics and in other medical fields but how to save our own time by using our own counselors let us see wonderful tips from dr rajiv roy i i learned few of his tips during personal conversation and let us have him uh, for his lecture on counselors the role thank you so much so i wish i could be attending so many things simultaneously but unfortunately i am one person i can't attend everything at the same time and cater to huge volumes as uh, uh, dr gurwa reddy said you are the cause you are the effect you are the hero you are the champion you are the boss you are the best you are the greatest and nobody can be you so take it from me you are the best counselor there is no doubt but you are the bottleneck 
and one should not be the bottleneck because your time has to be given to as many people as possible with the patient's satisfaction. And this talk is dedicated towards bringing this on. So a timeline, as uh, Dr. Gurwa Reddy has already said, say about 15 minutes on the lower side and 30 minutes for a surgical patient would be the time that would be required for every patient. So if you are a standalone doctor, and you have 20 patients, it would take five hours approximately. But in addition, but in case you have a counselor with you, you can do that exactly in half, half the time, giving greater patient satisfaction, covering more patients in the same time, and higher OPD to surgery conversion. And that is what we are looking for. So who is a counselor? From my side, I'm not looking at definitions given on the net or the dictionary. It's a person who knows the complete picture of the disease and can convert scientific knowledge into simple layman's knowledge and connect with the patient. Arjit, have you lost his uh, contact? Yes, I think we should wait for uh, a minute. Uh, last yeah. 30 seconds. Until then, I have a question from Dr. Abhijit Joshi. The question is for Dr. Guruva Reddy, sir. Uh, yeah, if ahead. a new surgeon who is into joint replacement, uh, if he wants, if a patient comes to him and he, the patient is quite good from money perspective. So they will look upon him as a junior surgeon. So how should a new replacement, joint replacement surgeon convince that sort of patient? I think that is his lecture topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, it all depends on um, how many times you fail to convince the patient. No doubt. You are wet behind the ears. People will take you that way. Then slowly it will come. But only thing is in the even in the initial days, number one, well properly dressed, properly tied up. Right. Even a suit gives you big things. And talk assertive, talk as though you are the God's gift to arthroplasty. Don't be overconfident, but talk in assertive terms and put that extra empathy into that. Yeah. And Raji, Raji, we are you are back. We understand that. Since we had lost contact, you are muted. Unmute yourself. Rajiv, please unmute yourself. We just took up one question. By the time you could log in again. And please share your screen again. Yeah. So we were just discussing a question of uh, patients, confidence, etc. So you can go ahead with yeah. your second, third slide. Yeah, please go ahead. We are again back to the lecture. So what are the skills that a counselor should have? Of course, most of them have already been alluded to, so I would not repeat. But I would say problem solving and an attitude to help the patient, that should be an integral part. And I would insist that they learn photography, they should be IT efficient so that uh, they can communicate with the patient on the phone and everything. And I have a team of counselors, never have only one counselor. And then once they start realizing the importance, they are always asking for a raise in the salary to unimaginable amounts. So having more numbers is helpful there. So how do we train our counselors? First of all, they have to know everything about the hospital. Where is the laboratory? What is, where is the ward? What sort of wards? What are two rooms, one rooms? They should, they are taken to the operation theater. They see a few procedures so they can appreciate what's happening. They have to have a complete understanding of uh, most of the things. Now in my place, the CT scan and uh, the patient has to go out of the building to for the CT and MR centers or for the physiotherapy. So they are physically taken to each center so that when they are explaining to the patient where to go for a CT or a MR, uh, um, um, examination, 
they can explain it better. They have to be trained to be accessible for patients' queries over calls and even on WhatsApp. They should be trained to, I use them to train, uh, I train them to maintain patient records, clinical pictures, so they help me to form folders where all the record keeping goes and it is done by the counselor himself. They should be well versed with the philosophy of the surgeon. This is very important because <clears throat> the, the basic philosophy, um, if it is in, in line with what the surgeon has taught the counselor, it makes a very big difference in converting. So everyone is on the same page when they're talking to the, to, the, uh, to the patient and they should be, of course, they should visit the patient post-operatively as well. So that adds to their confidence when they come next time. Now I tell my counselors, do not let me talk. You do most of the talking. So in that phase, they take over the conversation and I will show you a video how this is done. Ensure all patient questions have been answered. The, the counselors are told that they should be happy with all the face time they have. Think from the patient's point of view, use the same language and the patient's perception of the treatment should be absolutely five star. So basically um, they are asked to establish a relationship because when you are a counselor, many of these points are not required, but when there is a second person who is doing the counseling, in that situation, we go through a lot of points and um, all the questions that have been, um, that are raised by the patient should be answered. And communication is the key. So that again is taught as Dr. Shantanu say, look in the eye, um, be very, very polite and talk about everything. So what is the diagnosis? So this is all what the counselor does rather than me doing. That would save me a lot of time. As Dr. Gurwa Reddy said, if you have a very robust backup of counselors, registrars, senior registrars who are looking after, the problem is the quality of the registrar and senior registrar keeps on changing. Maybe Gurwa Reddy is in a, in a hospital and has a center where he attracts the best of the best but there are a lot, lot of questions that the patient has. Um, when will I, will I sit? When can I travel? When I can go back to work? So before the patient asks these questions, the counselor should address as um, from, uh, as a, um, from before itself, uh, before the patient asks, the counselor should have answered all these queries that he anticipates from the patient. So everything under the sun should be talked by the counselor. And then we have a helper workflow to manage the time. Now this is a topic, this one or two slides are away from the basic topic I've been given, but it's basically time management in the OPD. So the helper or the counselor, whoever it is, he first opens the door, welcomes the patient, settles the patient onto the uh, examining table, uh, opens the patient's record on the computer. He sequences the patient's report and places x-ray scans on the view box and stands ready next to the patient couch for clinical examination and evaluation from the surgeon side. So at this point, I come in. Now, after I go, then the, 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 the patient is helped off the couch onto it onto a chair, he listens, he has listened to all the doctor's instructions, keeps the wheelchair ready to shift out, keeps the reception informed about the next patient to be cured and escorts the patient to the, to the post consultation and assists the patient in the follow-up appointment as well. So counselor is not restricted. appointment next The counselor goes. So the patient feels very comfortable. He's not finding for a place. Now, this should be as smooth as an orchestra. The OPD should run very smoothly. There should not be haphazard things happening here and there. As has already been alluded to, the counselor takes the telephones of the consultant. 
and answers to the because 85 percent of the of the uh, questions on a telephone to the consultant are things that even the counselor can answer or he can ask a long question with the which is a word one word answer for the consultant and then the counselor talks on the telephone for another two minutes three minutes whatever the time is required we usually run a number of cabins and dressing areas. So we have a light system. So you can see inside the OPD chamber, there is there are four lights can be seen. Outside the chamber, again, four lights can be seen. And those lights are connected to the reception desk. And each light, it, it, it is an indication for some things. Say, for example, a patient is waiting for the consultant or a stretcher is required or a wheelchair is required, or there is a problem and send in water because someone is crying and you want water sent in. So everything is coded, nothing is, the patient doesn't come to know how things are happening, but the wheelchair comes in automatically when the light is on and the light is switched on by the council the moment he say, sees that the examination is over. So that waiting for the stretcher, waiting for, the, um, for anything to happen, um, that time is saved. So the main keyword, if I have to say, is anticipate. Now we have a very um, uh, comfortable waiting room on one side, but you see the picture on your right hand side. This is a back lobby that goes behind the consulting rooms and you can walk into any consulting room from here. Now. This, is, this has to be in the infrastructure planning. So when you have, a, if you are in cabin number four, normally people have a door between their two cabins and they have to walk through the cabin. You walk to into a cabin and the patient says, sir, I have a lot of time for my child's school ka time hai, or whatever. And you want to go to another cabin or you want to go and see a dressing. So this allows you to jump into from one cabin, supposing there is a patient who's creating a lot of ruckus and you want to jump two cabins and go to that cabin to control the situation. So that is a part of the infrastructure planning if you have a chance. So anticipate, as I said, and this is a small video. Uh, I will, please excuse me for some um, grammatical mistakes in the written. And this is me examining a patient of avascular necrosis of the, so, now, this is the counselor. I make him sit on my chair to give him the importance. I introduce the counselor to the, to the patient and say, he will explain you everything and please feel free to ask whatever you want to ask. Now, this is the counselor who's taking you to what is avascular necrosis. He tells you what the total ape is. He tells that the femoral head has been removed. The femur has been implanted. That's the acetabular side. Finally, he comes to the complications. This is a page of hip fractures. So he says, what are the neurovascular problems, infections, the benefits and everything. And finally, after this, he comes to the costing. The costing is talked only if the patient asks because some patients feel they are very rich. They should not talk about cost, but usually patients, what does it, what would the cost entail? So, he takes it through every room, the general ward, the special room, and he keeps on underlining and says that the medicine cost is not included. This is where I come back again. I have seen two more patients in the meanwhile. And then I ask, if there is any other question you want me to answer, I will be very happy to, um, to please feel free. If there are doubts that, I have not, that have not been cleared, so I wait there and I answer the rest of the questions. Because one of the problems with the counselor is patients want you. They don't want the counselor. As Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Carve said that um, people have come for you, they have not come for the counselor. That's perfectly right. But somewhere you, because the bottleneck has to be broken. So I think with this, I would end my talk uh, thanking the organizers for this very excellent, interesting, um, odd topic uh, for which I have been invited. Thank you.
Thank you, Rajiv Ram. Though it was a odd topic, but that was a fantastic scientific deliberation. So it was it was wonderful to learn all those great tips. And the first thing I'm going to have is uh, to come to your city and to see your field of counselors. Thank you so much. Now I would yeah. one thing. Life. I I would add one or two little things. Number yeah, one, yeah. it takes six to nine months to to train a good counselor. Yes, absolutely. So a lot of patience is required because they have to learn. Most of them are not doctors. My, my place, I have don't have doctor because if we get a doctor, they want to earn more. So either they would leave me or I would not be able to afford them. Then they start grumbling. So I usually prefer, and um, this is a do number ki baat ki. I prefer um, uh, usually ladies who are either widows or they are divorcees, so that. They don't have functions every day. Ki acha, aaj meri saas aa gayi hai, na aaj mera ye aa gaya hai, na falana problem, na digra problem. So, chutiya utiya wo kam karein. That's do number ki baat again. I know everything is being recorded and people can see it even two years from today or ten years from today and can catch me for this. But I think probably selecting your counselor is extremely important. I, they are trained to speak the same words, the same language, the same. a train of thoughts in the same tone so actually we call them parrots so you have parrot number 1 parrot number 2 parrot number 3 and the parrot would say and i would say okay thr so the parrot would go on reciting the same thing because what i have learned is whatever you have to repeatedly say because speaking takes away a lot of energy and now when as your age increases you are not interested in spending so much of time speaking that's number 1 although you are enthusiastic but even then you get exhausted talking 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 so it's always nice to have someone else do the same thing thank you thank you for those wonderful tips uh, manoj you wanted to ask something uh, specific or harjot you have any question in mind uh, i think you must have also got a lot of i am yeah. saving some questions for panel discussion Okay. I am mesmerized by these three talks, and I am finding it much more beneficial than I imagined. Yeah, yes, Doctor Manoj. Any any questions? Yeah, yeah. Sir, you from... started like we need to. Manoj, your uh, internet uh, stability is an uh, issue. We can't listen to you. Uh, can no, you unshare, I... Rajiv? Can you unshare your screen so that we can have a. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, nope, absolutely fine, sir. Please. So now I would like to invite uh, Doctor Ashish Pardnis sir to share his screen and share the pulse of wisdom. Manoj, do you want to speak? But we can't listen to you. Can you change the internet or can change your Wi-Fi? Try for that. Ashish, please proceed. Yeah, we are ready to listen to you. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir, and thank you very much to uh, all of you for having given me the opportunity. And um, so, incidentally, we are on the sixth of December today, and it's a a day that probably changed India's history for uh, ever. And uh, I come from a place. For most of you who don't know, is a place, a small district. Uh, it's a big district north of uh, Mumbai called Thane. in 2001 an incident happened uh, it was related to an orthopedic problem and uh, in which a big tertiary care center was burned down and uh, that again changed the course of the relationship between a doctor and a patient forever my talk is slightly going to digress to really serious issues uh, which are handled in the opd in the casualty but they are i mean uh, not the smaller issues or um, Uh, these are having a lot of consequences on the psyche of the doctor and they affect everyone who's involved with the patient care so our hospital jupiter hospital is a tertiary care center which is one of the largest hospital in this particular district uh, it's a ultra modern hospital we do receive a lot of polytraumas we do receive a lot of complex cases for joint replacements we have lot of patients who are undergoing organ transplant so we get patients who are multiply uh, sort of injured polypharmacy and even patients who are having multiple comorbidities so over the last 10 12 years we have developed a particular style of counseling a particular uh, theme of uh, you know sort of you know talking to the patient 
and uh, everyone as sir said you know talks the same song or uh, we call it sing the same song and i'll take you through our experience and what it has been uh there is this book called the patient will see you now this is by eric topol who is a cardiologist and in this book it's a very uh, sort of very slow and boring book to a certain extent but it is quite a scary book for all of us because it tells us what where we are heading now the times that the doctor will see you now has changed to the patient will see you now so the patient wants to see you at his convenience the patient wants you to answer the questions that he has the more so in case of the urban patient as dr kapre was mentioning there's a difference between the urban and the rural patient the urban patient or the sort of the metropolitan city ka patient will have will be informed with certain set of uh, information they are educated by google but what is going to happen next in our generation is google is even going to tell you whether that information is pertinent to them or it's not pertinent to them so they will not come with bizarre questions and you know that they have they being scared on the internet but they will be quite wisely educated now let's turn our attention to certain medical legal facts this is based on the orthopedic journals the bone and joint journal the orthopedic trauma and what has been published in the journal of injury and critical care that orthopedics is one of the commonest specialty or stream where medical legal cases are been filed world over though our mortality is low and these problems are common in trauma they are also common in arthroplasty however in arthroplasty and spine the payouts are much more higher and the most commonest reasons for why doctors are end up ending up paying or they are found at fault is either it is because of a failure to diagnose a particular therapy or to failure to initiate treatment add to that the hardware failures non unions neurovascular cases these damage are quite high amongst the medical legal cases across the board so this is the hospital so i'll present two case scenarios i mean imagine yourself to be in a casualty or as a on call orthopedic surgeon and you are faced with these two particular cases uh, patients to sort of you know drive home the point i've chosen two of our relatively sick patients who presented in the last couple of years so there is a 23 year old male industrial accident a heavy steel roller has fallen on his right shoulder he's got a scapulothoracic dissociation there is a subclavian artery laceration he comes with a cold extremity there is extremely bad chest injury lung parenchymal injury in short the patient is an extremist this is the patient's x-ray uh, you can see that this from the word go is a ba is bad news the issues here were revascularization ischemia time hemodynamic instability and the big problem here is there were no relatives there were no relatives he was brought by a contractor and a friend and the patient has no money the family also does not understand the gravity of the situation but here they are the ones who will cooperate with whatever treatment you have suggested he is a labor uh, uh, laborer by occupation all he and his friends say that you know just uh, do whatever best you can and we are agreeing to whatever treatment the problem in a corporate setup or in a private setup is that the patients does not have any money and there is no assurance that any money is going to follow the other case scenario is a very well off uh, patient he is 55 he is drunk at the wheel he is asleep at the wheel and he has a head on collision with another car he comes with a head injury bilateral shaft femur bilateral tibial plateaus uh, surgical neck humerus fractures and he is accompanied by too many relatives and too many friends the family is very aggressive they are in denial they do not consent for any intervention including a serum alcohol estimation because it will negate the insurance claim and it, a patient will have to bear all the expenses patient's images of a diffuse axonal injury the bilateral femoral fractures tibial plateaus and this you do the primary survey and you arrive at a conclusion as what is to be done now the problem comes of consenting the patient that you know both the cases something orthopedic or some intervention needs to be done the essential uh, ingredients for a consent is that we have to have some competent patient we have to disclose all the information and we also discussed previously whether you will disclose all the information or you will partly disclose the information so whether you are going to have a true consent or a informed consent that is a topic for some other webinar itself it's quite a detailed topic and the last thing is voluntariness of the patient who is giving the consent now the challenges of obtaining a consent in a orthopedic scenario in orthopedic patient is basically our patients generally who present with a trauma they are meeting you for the first time they may be conscious they may be in a state of shock they may be very irritated because they must have suffered the accident not because of their mistake the admission is completely unexpected it is completely unplanned and so two of the three ingredients the competence and involuntariness they are lost so you are already begin with beginning with a disadvantage 
the bigger problem is the patient recall about the consent process so when you are consenting something during an acute illness whatever you tell the patient the patient may say that i have no recollection that you ever told me all these complications or you i have no recollection of that you know this was all told to me or an option was given to me so there is difficulty of retaining the information there is a difficulty of processing the information and there is also difficulty of imagining what is going to happen me happen to me in the next few days so all in all these are all ingredients for a bad outcome and an unfavorable outcome and these are uh, incidences when there is a lot of problems happening between the doctor and the patient as a relationship as a whole so what we designed was something like a multidisciplinary team meeting in a multi we have borrowed this idea from a oncology or a tumor board i mean the uh, any of you who is associated with the oncological setup they have something called as a tumor board where a radiation oncologist medical oncologist surgical oncologist and the patient's relative and the patient they sit in the meeting together to formulate a treatment plan for the patient so what is this mdm so this is a basically we all sit together the all the health pro care providers who are involved in treating the patient they present the critical information in a effective way so we call all the patients uh, patients family the patients friends who are sort of you know going to help him take a decision uh, educate them about what is happening with the patient what do we discuss in this we discuss end of life issues we discuss prognosis the course of treatment so far as i said the good news and the bad news if there any hope for improvement if all the possible complications which are there uh, if the patients ask for percentage kitna guarantee hai all those uh, you know dialogues which need to be given to the patient that there is no guarantee of any particular thing but the only guarantee is that we will do our 100% for the betterment of your patient the expenses and the icu stay if required so to extrapolate this to a joint replacement or to a complex elective surgery or elective spine surgery like a scoliosis the same thing is been done but this is done in a much more uh a slightly a uh, relaxed manner because the rapport has been developed between the patient's family they have technically agreed to go ahead with the surgery so in these meetings apart from the clinicians the different different uh, specialties like let's say uh, medicine general surgery neurosurgery plastic surgery whoever is involved in take in taking care of this particular patient is involved along with the hospital administration from one person from the admin and one person from the finance is also involved to explain to the patient what is going to happen when do we do this meeting we do this in case of polytrauma we try to do this as soon as possible whenever the ct scan and the initial information is done and then we do it on a regular interval so in our hospital we have sort of devised that if the patient is staying in the icu for more than 3 days then planned we do it every 3 days if the patient becomes a chronic patient we do it every 5 days if the patient is in the ward for let's say more than 7 days of uh, expected admission then we do a meeting once in a week at least with all the patients who's there uh, all the patients relatives let's say for example there's a fractured neck femur which has complicated he's got urosepsis is lying in the icu for a longer time or who has probably sort of uh, a periprosthetic fracture who is not mobilizing as well we do this meet mdm meeting again in the opd block we call all of them uh, all of the interested parties and do it so do it basically as often as you think is required to explain to the patient's relatives properly exactly what is happening especially in vip patients uh, you think that patient this patient is sort of you know uh, sub, I mean, you don't get good vibes from the relatives you want to talk to them and communication is the key here so you do it as often as is required in our hospital we have identified a couple of side rooms where we do otherwise there is a library where there is a separate room which is meant for that and we call it the mdm room this is recorded the consent of the patient's relatives and it is been told up front to them that you can record the meeting if you want to but we are going to record this meeting so we are going to explain all the possible complications the expenses involved everything is told to them so there is a voice recording in the room there is a cctv which also records the the video so uh, make sure you consent the patient's relative that this is going to be recorded very rarely have we come across a situation where the patients really to say that they don't want a recording then we explain to them very nicely that it is better for both the parties that this is recorded it is not for the purpose of you know sort of pointing fingers at oh we told you all these things and then you still did not comply no it is not for that it is basically just for the sake of our quality control our administration wants to see whether there is in a shortfall in our standard of care or the treatment that we are giving the patient so it is in their benefit and our benefit as well 
at the end of the recording it it basically takes about 45 minutes or so very easily in a sort of a polytrauma situation or in a very highly charged atmosphere but what we have found is that most of these meetings end on a very cordial note this is the sort of a paper or a communication record now i mean if people are seeing this on a smaller screen you might not be able to uh, understand what is written but i'll just read out to you this is the first second patient and we have enumerated the diagnosis the problems that the patient had the issues that we have discussed the prognosis of the patient and the possible complications there is the name of the patient's attendant whoever attended and the, the names of the patient, of the doctors who were involved along with the administration staff the nursing staff and the billing person who was there during the counseling so eventually i will just like to close the cases we proceeded with the damage control orthopedics eventually we shifted the patient to the icu as expected the patient developed ards he had lot of uh, uh, issues with his chest but he settled sailed through all that we did the internal fixation later on coming to the first case with the guy with the crush injury unfortunately he did not land up with a very good outcome he developed chest related problems he fought very hard and here you can see that again the number of doctors who are involved is the nephrologist the chest specialist the uh, the general surgeon the insurance coordinator uh, the marketing personnel the person from the admin icu at this at the same time these mdm this is the room where the mdm meetings are being conducted but in the photo you can see dr chandak when he had paid a visit to our hospital and as i said we have a very big department so we keep on discussing these cases we take independent opinions from our colleagues we tell the patient you want a second opinion we have a second opinion if you want to take it from someone from our team or some of the senior colleagues who are there in the department if they don't want a second opinion from those they are free to take the papers elsewhere and take a second opinion and come back to us whenever they have made up their mind so the important thing is to have friends and colleagues i am blessed in our department to have colleagues who have unfortunately been around at the time when this incident happened in 2001 so a very rich experience comes from them they have sort of you know seen the things unfold with their own eyes and therefore they are, they were able to sort of you know agree and formulate to these particular problems and uh, these are some of the, these are all of the colleagues who were there and this is our department i would thank you very much and i'm quite happy to take any questions regarding this matter thank you very much sir this is a very enlightening talk and this is actually the need of all due to the gap in the patient doctor relationship and trust there were already two or three questions related to this topic before you even began and you have covered most of them one thing that i would like to ask you is uh, whenever there is a polytrauma patient or even said let's say sim a femur shaft fracture and they are accompanied by some counselor or some political leaders local leaders two or three people have come in your opd asking kya hoga kaise hoga then how do you deal with them so if they if they corner me alone in a opd yes then we have registrar so i generally call them you always call a nurse inside and uh, and then we talk to them unfortunately that happens a lot especially when politicians are involved so there is no option but to just very politely talk to them and present to them that you know yes this is a bad injury this is going to have a lot of problems he is going to require all of your support he is going to require everyone's prayers and those uh, standard you know sort of uh, empathetic uh, counseling that you would do in these particular patients uh, fortunately uh, i it's a corporate hospital so i uh, i'm not then uh, we do face face the questions of sir kuch discount hoga kya patient is completely unaffording and all so i have the luxury of referring them to our billing person i said that i'll put in a word to them we'll offer the maximum discount but you know that in these situations generally uh, the hospital's hands are also tied we always mention that none of the emergency treatments will be withheld from the patient for want of money whatever needs to be done will be done for example you need to repair the artery to control the bleeding you need to revascularize the limb so fortunately our hospital is very supportive in that manner that we are able to take that uh, call without uh, getting the billing involved we get a clearance from them but yes later on the patient has to clear uh, the issues once in a while you will come across uh, one, not more than once in a while you will come come across a patient who would sort of not pay or uh, but generally the patients are patient themselves they are quite grateful it is the relatives who are a source of worry thank you very much uh, let us welcome dr tanna sir he has joined uh, uh, the deliberation tanna sir we had uh, four lectures so far and dr ashish farnis was 
giving a lecture on uh, collective counseling and collective meetings to emphasize on the difficult situations uh, i have a question for dr ashish yeah um, how do you declare death uh, is there any good way or any protocol or any sort of a method by which you declare death uh, so um, the two things one is if the death is in the casualty or generally is in the icu so even in the casualty unless it is brought dead we shift the patient to the icu where uh, we you know call the patient's relative so let's say the patient was with us for a long time and then he has deteriorated <laughs> then then you have sort of developed a rapport with the patient's family over a period of time every day you are spending time with the relative saying that you know you are trying to do whatever is possible but unfortunately it is not working or is not responding you have taken the second opinions the third opinions you have given him all sort of supported treatment but nothing is working so in that case it becomes a bit uh, uh, sort of you know not i wouldn't say easy but then you have your support system that you know we have the icu consultant with us who are used to uh, declare the death or uh, the icu registrars most of the times in the ground our ic registrars are post uh, uh, mbbs for sure but a lot of them are also post md so let's say things happen at 2 o'clock in the night in a patient who is with us for about 7 days they do declare the patient dead and uh, uh, sort of inform us but if it happens in the day then we are around to declare any other question harjot no so i think we should move ahead and leave some questions for the panel discussion yeah please so now i would like to invite dr jawahar jetwa sir with, with yet another very interesting topic uh, like earlier said in the meeting selling yourself without actually selling so how to signify yourself in your own opd so welcome dr jawahar jetwa sir thank you very much dr chandak and the whole team so my topic is opd signifying self in improving practice so people know who is the best which is the best brand they know which is the best facility and how come your name is not there so what actually are the barriers in self promotion do you want to be really modest or not to call about yourself for any you know big achievement so let us think of that what could be the barriers and how we can overcome them so when you want to signify yourself what do you want to signify your knowledge expertise modesty concerns for the care administration ethical approach humanity absence of negative qualities or your rational earning all of these you want to signify all of these you want to directly indirectly want to convey to the patient that how much i have a knowledge how much is my expertise in everything so you are supposed to promote yourself because this is something which you want to discuss in such a webinar it is not in the curriculum it is not you are not been trained for that and if you are really good it's a waste of your skill and knowledge because you have not promoted and ultimately those patients who need your expertise and knowledge they are lack of it so it's a less selling for the patient so one must promote what they have the best so you can promote what you can promote only what you have including god has to say to the saint that please visit my website for the facilities in the heaven so you cannot promote something which you do not have also that is very important to understand what do you have to promote so uh, let us see that there are multiple factors by which you can have a very satisfactory or a, a roaring practice or some sort of whatever you want and you are happy with the practice so there are multiple points on which anybody can be successful so let us see like you have a best of the qualifications or a skill or experience or you have a legacy you have a heritage you have a brand you have a goodwill so you have that point not that all the points are with everybody but few of them will make you successful you have a good humanity ethics honesty you have a art of convincing communication so that only it will work you may not have a good qualification you may not have a good legacy but the art of convincing may work it up your location you are having a prime locations where maximum patients they 
they are through so you will be able to go through or you have a group you have a facility which is so fantastic compared to other hospitals or you have a best technology with updated all everything so go on promoting that or you are a master of the equipment you know that particular uh, arthroscope or whatever the new gadgets or the you know computer guided any navigation or whatever so you have to promote that very important thing is sometimes surgeon is simply popular because he is every time available he is so punctual he is always attends so pick up that what you have you have to have a good receptivity or pro ship if that is good that also you have to go on promoting that so and so will take care of it and if you are in a team where there is a polytrauma you can go on talking about it because we have a team something better can be done or you can be uh, given a good credit and lastly very important you have to create an uh, image that you have a love for mankind you are a charity people often say that ultimately let us ask him before we go for surgery to any other surgeon if he says surgery is to be done we will go for it you he may not come to you but you are having a, such a lo good love for mankind and charity so any of this two or three or five or five, five six factors is going to give you a successful uh, practice so what do you want to promote think of not only of these factors but think of and develop what people like about you do not go on insisting what you like about because what you like about people may not like so you have to find out what people are praising about you and only promote those things and that will click a lot so uh before now we go with a with a we pray self promotions and advertisement please see this 6.1.1 clause for the mci Uh, and that says very let us read word by word soliciting of patients directly or indirectly by a physician by a group of physician or by institutions or organization is unethical that is number 1 although we need to have a movement to fight for the freedom so ultimately some day will come where we have to advertise our whatever is the uh, specialty the second very important point with uh, ethical advertisement a physician shall not give therapeutic article in any form or manner of advertising through any mode or shall he boast of cases operations cures or remedies or permit the publication of report thereof through any mode so you have to be smartly avoiding this potential litigations so you have to be very careful that you do not go so much high so that it will be in the eye of all other administrators now very important thing is that you want to say something like you know guarantee and other things so i in my uh, file I, i write down like medicine is not an exact science there is an unknown role of nature i simply assure you my best efforts and i also talk to the patient that nature surely would support my best skills for your complete recovery but what actually i do is a modest way i am not boasting i am not showing off but what i actually do is i say i guarantee but the word i guarantee is so much you know arrogant so as i simply assure you or say uh, i am the best in the town i cannot say like that because it again arrogant so i say my best skill will be supported by the nature so these are the tricks by which you can say that i am the best so once you have something which you think you are going to promote take up this as a product so you have to plan that you have to prepare for that and you have to propagate so you know which are the best best quality which are going to be praised by the whole lot of society so there you have to have this so where should be your presence of your product that should be in all your stationeries all your brochures display boards internet presence and also whatever you are going to uh, give as a flyer in a periodic in social media all these things is very important and all the time you have to see that you remain updated if the phone number is older one or the email is older one you need to check it that everything is updated with that information so when you offer something to the patient it is always good that you remain honest sincere ethical methodical systematic and as per your capability you do not talk so much 
if you are not capable of doing that because you are doing that randomly uh, all the time be optimistic and smartly say harmful harmless harmless incomplete truth so you have to be so smart in telling the complication at the same time not telling everything that can be so scary to the patient now counseling and communication is very important so you call all the relatives you do not go on repeating when every one what one relative comes into the cabin you tell them that all of you should come and you have to greet all of them because it is now the treatment of the relatives or visitors rather than the patients so you be careful where there you talk to everybody and have a clear dialogue do not have a confusion and the most of the speakers have said very correctly you should go with the least alternatives so so much that you be so specific that i want to do like this it is best for you there are chances that he may not uh, end up with you he may go somewhere else but this is the practice which is 90 80 to 90% is going to give you success then use apt and smart phraseology <clears throat> to something which makes a jokes only you have to be very careful and all the time leave finances with others have a counselor have a somebody do not talk much about um, money directly with the patient as far as it is possible so counseling and communicating when you do that you know that you want to get involved you want to self promote yourself for empathy so you point out something on x ray point out something on ct or mri do not just sit idle use plastic models a lot show some results on google and talk about some satisfied patient and say every time that he was so good thank god go on thanking god multiple times so that it 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 it, it appears that you are so much uh, you know uh, open and whenever possible have a two slides pdf so you quickly want to show something so have a two slides presentation of all the cases which you have done the best and ask them to be part of treatment now this is very important in counseling tell them we together can only get the best results so say that it is only 50% in you know, on my side and i always say that it is only 25% on my side and rest of half half is with the god and with yourself so i am i am not able to do everything together very important point in marketing or self promotion is a care of key opinion leaders you need to go for free of charge work you need to go on uh, having a smart reminders that what has happened to that and you have to respect the referring person every time he may be talati he may be sarpanch he may be the elder person in that village always talk about him and say that give my regards or say hello to your whoever has referred and always help colleagues in a big way when colleague is asking your help that is a key point to promote yourself maybe you are sacrificing your practice you may be sacrificing your time but see that you help wholeheartedly to your colleagues whenever they are in need now this is very tricky the estimate or bill and most strongly presented element in our case so it's a major role in popularity because even if you take 5 lakh rupee and patient is fine he would say no he is a fine doctor but if you take only 1000 rupee and the result is not good it's going to give you bad name so bad name is because of the result but at the same time you have to see that you do not unnecessarily charge very high so organize this type of task with a counselor or the other person who talks about the bill a lot and very importantly if you have something which is like a limit show and guide them where less expensive treatment is available i learned this from dr vidya so you have to be with the patient you tell him yes so and so government hospitals you can get it at a lower rate and so and so and very important thing is if you are very careful with the administration charge less than estimate so you give a very big estimate and when you charge less all patients will be very happy so there is another good method of promoting yourself as far as your reasonable earning is concerned everybody has said very well that your appearance reflects quality of your surgery will my screw will be longer or shorter will my screw will be apt or not my length of the plate will be good or not all depends on my 
fitting of the dress, my language, my attitude, my voice clarity, my facial expression, and my lifestyle. So from there, there is an indirect communication and dialogue, or sort of a, you know, impression by the patient. that will he be able to do a nice and precise surgery on me very important point is that do not spend money on advertisement or big boards because free opportunity is there when patient is in the waiting room it's a very very important time when they are waiting for you so fully utilize time of all visitors in the waiting room the best most effective costless opportunity to promote yourself so have a clear display of facilities expertise and affiliations and that is a time where they have nothing to do but uh, a time for you to promote whatever you have in your facility or institutions another very important thing is that do not think that what you are talking about is is perceived there is a collateral impressions the relatives and visitors they know everything they already have decided that if i get a femur femur fracture whether i am going to come here again or not although they have come as a relative of the patients so there is a collateral impression of whatever you do whatever your staff the do so person who is paying the bill is again a very important he he is usually not the patient but you have to be very careful that he is an elderly person who is paying the bill or the contractor or the uh, all the you know owner so you need to see that they are comfortable while paying the bill of course the patients get collateral impression referring person he keeps a note in the society i referred and what happened to that so be careful to give all feedbacks to that very importantly all your hospital staff they know how do you deal with that they also create a good impression in the society so that is the collateral impression we have to be very careful as a whole to the society so be aware to signify self create better impressions and see that it is perceived as a collateral most in potential source of future patient is your collateral impressions so that will bring more and more patients another point for that is your team your staff should be always free fresh and smiling once you have prescribed something which is not available in the in the in the pharmacy it is a big panic so do not do that because it is a collateral impression that you something you do not know about your own chemist and you are going to prescribe have to have a single window administration that gives a best uh, comfort cultured and comfortable appearance it has to be culture it should be with the you know regional area and it should look like that it is our hospital our uh, culture strictly not bad smelling take immediate action if the waiting room or opd is bad smelling that gives a big big very bad uh, sort of a negative impressions and always use a full illumination in the opd area in the opd area do not try to cut off lights you can do everywhere else but in opd it should be fully illuminated this signifies your taste and concerns indirectly that is how they get an impression and you can promote your that i am always up to date and i will take care of other than only the treatment sometimes as a speaker said that you have to do some natak you have to really help them so you have to respect and help old patients come out of the opd greet him help him to come inside the opd to the disabled patients and also to the children play with some with the children because they want that the doctor is in part of their family so this signifies your humanity so all the other people who are sitting in the waiting room they will have a good impression that this doctor is genuinely for the mankind when patient is critical team has to be serious please avoid if the patient we are very uh, bad in bad conditions and the staff is taking selfie that is at all not allowed so you have to have a big sort of a eye on this type of incidences be very careful for that then damage control sometimes we do not know so take all safety measures everything in your opd area including the electricity or the lift or whatever you have to take all safety measures buy all accessories for new equipment never say that i have bought it but this type of facilities i have not bought 
So whenever you want to buy anything new, maybe CT scan, MRI, or whatever the gadgets or whatever, buy with all accessories. Keep all gadgets up to date. It's not like this. For last two days, the cold water is not available. Everything, whatever you want to give a facility to the patient, it has to be up to date. And employ expert technicians, which is very important. You might have to pay a little more, but this signifies your administration because the person who is taking extra, if he's a good. it will make a big collateral impression to the patient another thing for the damage control is you need to have a separate opt by weekly time for chronic complicated cases because they are going to you know give a bad impression to the other patients so when you know that this patient you do not declare it but you know that i will be calling on thursday evening so that there are other patients who can be separated with that and i have been taught by my great guru dr dinubhi patel that 60% will pay much less than expected so take it granted do not indulge with less payment whenever at the end so do not go with a quarrel with that and we have to be very careful with the misconduct and threat by the staff in that do not shout do not show your anger you have to show your calmness and that signifies your quality and that is how you can be promoted but everything happens but he is always in a, in a sense and he is always in a balanced way so it will not uh, deteriorate my treatment technology very important acquire and adapt today's technologies because this is the only way you can signify your pace with that of current world if you are not with the technology people and the second generation their children they will immediately point out that you are out of debt so you need to have technology and for the society this is very important lead a series of physician community partnership town hall meeting that is very important otherwise they do not know how good you are so all these questions common questions can be so have some sort of such uh, meetings in your area or in your society or city then very important thing is that whenever you are doing something unusual or something very important invite your colleagues and students from the medical college that will make and promote your skills and your whole way of treating the patient or operating methods or whatever participate in worthy conferences your selection of conference also makes your impression and participate do not just be a delegate on over the social media we know it is a most acceptable conveying of your expertise so go on posing your your patients your queries your interactions because whatever you are going to give response on this social media is well judged by everybody and that also is slowly creating that which way you are worthy of promoting of your expertise so that is very important and the last slide is that you need to avoid negative qualities as in the 18th adhyay of bhagavad gita on 28th slok there are some of the negative qualities of human which you have to avoid for example discordant you should not be harsh anyway for anything you have to have a sweet language you should not be stubborn on anything you have not to cheat you should have not any malicious ambitions you should not look indolent which is very important lethargy you say okay i'm just coming okay i'm doing this or you do not you, you patients should feel like you, you are fast enough to take care of whenever there is any emergency or whatever do not remain hopeless now i mean hopeless or do not show that you are hopeless uh, so this careful is again a quality we should avoid that whatever is possible in the given situation in the given stage of the patient's uh, disease whatever is possible show that hope and explain about that and lastly procrastinating is very do not delay do not only say that okay we can do after one month or after two months that also is a negative qualities and at the end please avoid all personal comments but nobody likes personal comments so i thank you very much for this uh, opportunity for the organizer i hope you like all these uh, points which i have given and i am open for any questions or comment thank you
Yeah, I think this is the most comprehensive uh, lecture and advices from your own experiences, which one could have. And I think if uh, all of us follow all these small, important, so many tips which you had given, everybody will be successful in their practices. It's really much appreciable and best lecture so far. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think we can have some questions from the pan panelists for Dr. Jetwa, sir. Yeah. Dr. Shantanu, you wanted to ask, please go ahead. Sir, let me just uh, bow my head and hold my hands. The wisdom that you have shared to us, Jetwa sir, my only question is, how do I become so wise like you? Thank you, sir. It's actually a compliment, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Manoj, I would ask one question ask to one question Tanna, to sir. Tanna, sir. Tanna. Tanna. Hello. Hello, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Tana, sir, when we have a patient whom we have operated and the result is not good and we are required to do a second surgery, so what are your wisdom points to accept our own failure and how do we convince him and the and do, do that become a surgery which is totally taken up by the institution? So your inputs on a case which has gone bad, the result is not optimum. The only thing is, I think, if you try to hide from the patient, they will find out. Yes. So there is the question of hiding. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't come into the picture. But you can give them the statistics that no surgery is hundred percent. No No. No activity is hundred percent. Best of the share market people also cannot predict everything. And as as it was very very well mentioned by Jawar that the, we have tried to do our best, but there is no surgeon in the world who has not failed. Here, I think whatever it is, probably your body was, I think, instead of putting it onto you, put your body was there, probably not ready for so-and-so things. Or this is not so-and-so thing. So, it needs something to be done again. And if you would allow, I will like to correct it now. Okay, sir. Yeah. By and large, by and large, at my stage, is not much of a problem. But at the same time, at the same time, patient will seek another opinion before he, he, if they, they go on the, getting a second surgery by the same surgeon done. Except it is in first two, three days. That is a different thing altogether. Right. Thank oh, you yeah. So now we come come to the most uh, again, uh, next uh, awaiting lecture from the eminent uh, faculty, Dr. Guru Reddy, sir, a well-known figure in joint replacement all over India and across the world. So everybody, every orthoplasty surgeon has a wish to have numbers like him. So let us hear from him about the tips for patient to accept the scientific advice advice for joint replacement. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Can you see my screen? Uh, yeah, we yeah. can see you. Yeah, yeah okay. And uh, I should say, Dr. Chadak has put me on a very, very uh, uh, disadvantageous position after six great talks where 80% of my thought process has been covered in a beautiful slides. So I don't have any. Gaurava, what I would request is say everything. Huh? <laughs> How you have come around to this, you say everything. Okay, sir. Thank yes. you. <laughs> uh, so. I would just, I thought I kept my slides just to scientific advice for a replacement, but I reflect upon some of the things also, what I feel that uh, which are right things to do. Uh, right. I think this is the, this slide epitomizes all the practice now. Aj mere paas, the doctors, we all belong to Amitabh Bachchan. Aj mere paas super specialization degree hai, gold medals hai, international paper presentations hai, Tons of good skills. What is it you RMP doctor is saying, I have patients. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this epitomizes the whole practice or why this discussion is there today. So basically, it all depends on how to manufacture a patient. I'm sorry to use this word, but this is the way it is. It is not in, anymore like Dr. Tanna's days, how to treat a patient. Now, how to manufacture a patient? Because it's like a manufacturing process. You have to put a design, you have to put a plan into place, you have to do a lot of uh, uh, test, test things, everything and all that. But I'll say, still today, 
the art of medicine or practice of medicine is an art and as well as a science so like that getting a patient into your hospital is also an art that art should be mastered and can be mastered it is never taught in the medical schools and i will tell you the there are two things one is how to get the patients to your op and number two the which is my talk is how to convert this op into your ip so getting into the opd patient depends on your reputation and your credibility in the society which my previous speaker dr jawhar sir has alluded in a such a comprehensive way there is nothing much for me to leave but what i developed in the in my last 20 years of practice is you have to pamper the patient i call p the p nothing no treatment we don't treat the patient we pamper the patient that is the only way so my pampering starts from this part my hospital has got 10 people with wheelchairs waiting outside the moment a guy drops down from the auto or from the car these people will go and pick them into the wheelchair that is the one first impression because lot of the hospitals patient has to get down and search for a wheelchair so that should not happen so the pampering should start from the entrance of the hospital and second thing is uh, when our patients do not need to stand in the queues i got some four or five non negotiable rules in the hospital one of them is no patient should stand they either they sit in the chair or they will sleep in the bed in the uh, in patients that is the only way to be as to our patients should be so the patients are the moment they come help us will uh, welcome them they will make them sit in the uh, waiting room and the counselors will go to them and take their details and then they will get the registration so patient is not allowed to stand in the queue for registration but however busy the opd sir i got at least 10 people who are there to stand up and do that and all my opd patients and they run to around almost 400 a day uh, 150 opd and their relatives all put together 400 500 people they are supplied free coffee tea biscuits and depending on the summer the lassies and if the patient is diabetic free sandwiches it will cost me some thousands of rupees but so be it but this is a genuine concern of me and this will send an indicator to the patient and relatives that this doctor cares for us that is very important this is not a drama this is a genuine concern for the patient because they don't know when they are getting getting called inside so they don't go anywhere they just wait outside so this is very important for me and again this is a post operative or waiting area for the relatives when their kin are getting operated and this girl is my co operative counselor so the, she will supply the lunch boxes to all the relatives waiting in the uh, waiting area while their relatives are getting operated so this is the simple the thing it costs around 100 rupees one drink one biscuit packet and one sandwich and that is nicely put it into a, a sunshine snack and we would like to thank you for giving us an opportunity to take care of you that is the uh, slogan i put it there and that girl is little miss sunshine this is how how you brand it and how you do that just like airline services and again another important rule i tell to my pay, uh, our staff is no patient or relative is allowed to carry their luggage this patient is getting discharged now you can see my ima is carrying the baggage no relative is allowed to carry their baggage this is again a non negotiable principle in my hospital and again in our hospital discharge is a celebration i don't call it as a process it is a celebration so my nursing superintendent my patient care manager and if possible the consultant we go to the patient give her the discharge hamper with some goodies and then see her off at the car park that is mandatory again these are the things which will leave indelible impressions of that personal touch or personal care to the patient and i will tell any doctor should have these five a's to be successful accessibility affordability amicability accountability and last is ability because i would put it last because even if you are not able one doctor tanna or one doctor chanda can operate in the operating theater nobody knows you can be a ghost surgeon many people are like that but the four first things are very important qualities you should have accessibility means anybody wants to reach you they should have a proper number 
they should be able to get in touch with you not on your personal number affordability i say nobody should have a brand that this doctor is a money minded amicability we all heard in the previous lectures and accountability as dr tanna said every complication is yours you should never go around the complication you should go through the complication that is the only way now let us come to the opd it need not be five star hotel but there are two things in your mind one is high impact areas of the patient and one is non impact area because the theater however drab it looks you don't the patient doesn't care because he is sleeping but the patient sees the outpatient department so the patient that's why the wherever the patient sees the hospital there should be good ambience spend money take a good flooring as dr jawhar said nice good lighting make a nice uh, branding of the ambience there and the reception desk is very important hassle free registration process adequate number of counter avoid unnecessary waiting for patients i always say there should be a girl who doesn't have a computer who doesn't have a telephone she is called floater she just stands in front of administrative or reception desk her job is to ask every come person comes there to ask may i help you that's all as simple that she doesn't have any other responsibility she just keeps on asking may i help you may i help you and that is very very important and again this here that is what it is this is a, a patient respect uh, care manager she just stands there and asks the patients or relatives can i help you and again as i already told you tea coffee lassi sandwiches are served free and of course i got a luxury of uh, i got 15 fellowships every year and i got registrars i got at least 20 to 25 post ms guys who will be doing the screening but uh, as i said if you don't have that like the ethics you should have one proper doctor to do the screening for you rather than you wasting time on that and good dress makes a good doctor already alluded in the previous things i would say unless you are coming from operating theaters you should always have a suit this i learned in my days in england a well dressed doctor and especially the youngsters the question was asked if the youngster has to look great he should have a suit a proper suit again not a, a crumpled suit a proper suit and change the tie every day you don't need to change the blazer every day but change the tie every day a clean polished shoe these are all things which make difference and another important rule in my life is even if a fourth class employee or even a ima or even a lift boy comes into my room the first thing i offer is chair i'll ask him to sit if he doesn't sit i stand that is very important that is a fundamental civility or fundamental uh respect to a gentleman who is in front of you so like that the moment a patient or relatives come even if there are ten relatives you should make all of them sit get the chairs until they are seated don't start the conversation and another thing is already dr jawhar sir told the sweetest word in the whole world is the name so the your case note should come before the patient on to your desk and the native place also you should know the moment patient comes you should say i chanda or manoj how are you doing and how is the things in bombay or thane wherever he comes from and if you have got a bit of a political or a climactic information about that or recently floods have come how are the things there so give that impression don't talk anything until the first minute and then give your cell phone to your secretary it's already referred in the previous speaker the worst thing you can do to yourself in nowadays is having a cell i being interrupted by wife your driver and your girlfriend don't do that so give the cell phone to your secretary and let her note down all the calls and give it to you while you are going back for to your home so please don't be interrupted by the cell phones and again there are four t's to win any relationship whether it is a wife and husband or patient and doctor or father and son time i call four t's time touch trust and talk and how many times we forgot the touch of course unfortunately nowadays with the touch of this thing me to syndrome you touch a person in the wrong way that's a different story but the touch is very important you put a hand on the shoulder of the patient or take the patient's hand into your hand she will not leave you and she will not forget you so same thing trust and time and talk and fruitful 5 minutes of the, your consultation number one is building rapport calling the name and talking to his native place number two minute history number one minute for examination fourth is a treatment plan fifth is the parting shot that means in the fifth minute the moment pa patient is about to exit 
you got to summarize the treatment what you have told and then tell hey manoj i think it's a pleasure to see you boy and take care of yourself and take care of your son who is appearing for the exams and we will meet you some other time so like that you should have a parting shot it should as like a person came to your home and high expectations and false promises it is the worst thing a joint replacement surgeon can do never ever give 100% guarantee syndrome you got to resist that and again don't expect them to come like that to go like this that is the worst thing you can offer again as i told you ips don't the lady comes like that don't expect them to go like this so water down their expectations always expectations should be watered down new joint forever don't give that 100% guarantee lot of people ask me 100% guarantee i tell them only two people can give you 100% guarantee one is god second one is a fraud i am neither so that sums up my statement you can use that statement that is very easy to use so only god and fraud can give you i don't want to be god i am not god and i can't give you the false statement and neighbor syndrome they say my neighbor got better i am not getting better again another rubbish of the things and do not act as superman as i said you are not a god's gift to arthroplasty you are still very infallible vulnerable and be that but never be uncertain of your time that's what you got to be assertive but don't tell that whatever i do i never had a complication as dr tanna said don't do that only the fellow who didn't have the complications is number one the man who never operates that's all so again never try to outsmart the patient especially the urban patients the internet syndrome is there so again whatever the patient says you act at least as though you are giving lot of emphasis to that patient's uh, symptom so again do not show any of your vulnerability to the patient however young you are you got to say that you are the best and you are the best in the business as i established rapport with the patient involve relatives the patient. very very important point i am call all the relatives inside already dr jawar said the more relatives the better it is because these guys are the collateral impressions they will go and tell some other people are dr gurwardi has done a great job so call all the relatives make them sit and identify the lead guy there will be one lead relative either the daughter in law or the son in law or the mother in law father in law you identify them you look into their eyes and then talk to the conversation and be them as a part of your treatment as i said but sometimes the relatives are very very dangerous uh, the moment you say the only way to get rid of the relatives is ask the blood donation they will disappear so be aware of the relatives how is it delivered is as important as what is delivered already i told you the quality of the packaging that matters now coming to the counseling dr jawar already said all the physiotherapists of my department are trained as a counselors for all the youngsters here the physiotherapy is the best pool to get into the counselorship offer them more money and these people should be promoted as you go along so that is very important she is my physiotherapist she does the counseling she calls them auntie uncle and she develops such a rapport you don't need to do that and always the counseling in the outpatient to convert them to totally you should explain to them what happens before the procedure the day of the procedure and after the procedure there is another thing called bedpan phobia lot of patients do not express this but they are scared of bed pans so you got to tell them no need of bed pan the day two you will go to the bathroom that will create lot of comfort to them and now counseling audio visuals packages date of surgery patient testimonials blood reservation and the road map these are all again one stop shop here the patient is counseled here the patient is blood taken the ecg is taken and here the patient is served the sandwich and patient is gone home so that is how you should make it all a one stop shop and how to retain a patient you already told this is thing and again how to convince the patient you got to have x rays on your armamentarium you have to able to explain to them this is a normal joint this is grade 3 grade 4 now you are in this stage you have to get the operation and again use the patient information material i got my own personal dvds and pen drives made they are very purpose built you can do them no issues with the latest technology if you sit in the internet within one hour you can get your things you can use the models i use these models very very important and then they will understand that and again people in the hip replacement they will ask what are the types of implant i'll tell metal on poly ceramic on poly ceramic on ceramic i explained to them i was putting on the table now thanks to the 3d reconstruction and the complex fractures i asked them to come back next week and i get the ct scan done and i showed them how they their knee looks or how their hip looks and what i'm going to do and they will understand the complexity and they will appreciate the enormity of your job and they don't mind paying you extra this is a very important 
addendum for any of the youngsters. If you got a complex fracture, ask them to come back, but let them get a CT scan done, get the 3D our model done. Every place there is a facility to get the 3D modeling done. And again, a chart of the procedures, but don't show them the blood. Use the animation. There is a plenty of animations again available on the internet. Use the animation, show them how the knee replacement is done. Again, an important slide. A lot of people ask how many days a ceramic hip blast, how many days a metal hip blast. This is a beautiful illustrative slide. You can tell them this is the where, and they will understand very easily. So these sort of the key slides are very important to tell them. And again, Dr. as Dr. Chahor said, I got the macro robot. So you got to again explain to them the cutting edge of the technology and show the some slides where they will understand the, the uh, what you call nitty gritty of this one. And again, patient testimonials, get a nice videos before surgery and after surgery. Show these videos that will give lasting impression. While the patients are waiting, or while the patient uh, can go to the counselor, you don't tell this yourself. You tell the slide, this slide should be running on the TV so the patient knows how qualified you are, how many degrees you had, how many years you spent in England, what is your position, so they will understand this. This is again Dr. Jawhar told in a beautiful uh, explosion. So they develop route maps and protocols. Again, a beautiful English thing which I learned, every problem you should have a route map and protocol. This is my road map. My counselor will explain the patient, starting from AVGR has seen, and a pre-op had done, the cardiac has done. Suppose your cardiologist wants a DAC, the coronary angiography, then you'll go in this route, or you will go in this route, and you are discharged. So this will be self-explanatory. This will be self-printed, available to the patient, and this should be given to the patient. They understand very well. So very, very important. Internet-inspired idiot syndrome, you all know that, you got to be prepared for this sort of guys. And a lot of people will keep on asking, I am 100 kgs, whether I'm fit for the operation. And again, show the some slides in your previous uh, uh, practice, show them you can do it. That's why, again, complex deformities, put the slides, you can tell them, we can be happily doing this. So again, some people ask, I'm 90 year old, am I fit for the surgery? You can again show the slides. These are my girlfriends who are 85, 90. I operate with a bit of humor, no issues about that, and show them. And again, the orthopedic evaluation, sometimes preoperatively, they end up on the cardiac table and they will be confused. So you got to tell them, if your heart doesn't agree for the operation, the cardiologist might take you to angiogram and also explain to them the spinal procedures. A lot of people have got a misplaced myth that spinal anesthesia means backache for lifetime. So you got to tell them, no, no, it is not the way and explain to them. And again, pain. There is nothing pain-free operation, however good you are. So again, explain to the patient the relativity of the pain and the necessity of the pain and your ways to control the pain. Again, very important point. Don't sell, let them buy. Again, already previous speakers to sell that. Let them buy the operation and don't let them judge in your consulting room. Let them go home and discuss in their living room. You encourage that, they will come back. I tell them, one's wife can be somebody else's wife, but one's patient can never be somebody else's patient. So you develop that philosophical attitude, you will be fine. NRI children are key to the decision making. If you got a patient here, the children are in America, if the time is okay, immediately take the phone number, you dial from your phone to that son who is in Chicago and explain that your parents are here, they need knee replacement. That guy will never let the parents go anywhere. You are doing the effort to make the phone call. So that's what it is. From urban patients or doctor's patients, you can show some publication, like this is the, the latest, this is the one, so it can give you some information like that. But don't indulge them with too much scientific things. Don't counter other treatments. Again, a lot of people say, no, sir, the other doctor said only high tibial osteotomy is helpful. You are saying knee replacement. Don't brush the other surgeon. You can say that there is a different way to both the things, but this is the way I am trained, and I feel that this is the best way. And again, arthroplasty is a team sport. Again, I told you, you should have a good receptionist, good secretary. And again, for the youngster, don't wait until your money comes or until your... Uh, practice builds up. Get all of these people on the day one. Pay them from your pocket or take money from your father-in-law or buy you, sell your car, but get this team on the day one. That is very important. As I say, build, they will come. Not once they come, you develop the teams. No, develop the team on the day one. Very, very important point. And the bigger the team, the more important is the team. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. As Dr. Jawar said, you've got to train all the people of your team 
day in and day out. And these the teamwork. Again, I got great teams, and those all reflect my practice. And again, patient first. Every member of your team should have this badge on their lapels. Patient first. That is the philosophy. Never put money as a primary goal. It is incidental. Okay, you have to be believe in that, and you have to make the people believe in that. So never get a label that this guy is a money minded. You are doomed. I'm telling you. And about with the knee implants costing less and less, never ever discuss the finances. As Dr. Jawar already told yourself, if the patient asks how much this costs, you tell them that my patient counselor will. Explain any problems is there. I will take care of that. And so never ever discuss the finances. And then give brownie patients to the pay, points to the patient. That means the patient is doing good physiotherapy. Encourage the patient. They're doing good, and you will get excellent uh, relief. If you got a VIP patient, the best way to use the technology is develop a WhatsApp group where you, your patient counselor, your nursing superintendent, your medical superintendent. the patient son in america the patient's daughter in australia all of them in the whatsapp group that is a what's wonders it's a real time communication and they will appreciate that and finally let me tell you there is an axiom there is a quotation whether you are a doctor of allopathy homeopathy or naturopathy you should have sympathy you are compassionate and humane then you will win the games no matter of your drama no matter of your histrionics no matter of your false advertisement no matter of your selling yourself will not replace the compassion people like dr tanna are still respected at this age i don't know how young dr tanna is must be 80 but still people respect him in every conference and every part in bombay or all over india why because of his human nature and because of his ability to touch the souls of the patient that is how every one of us should practice compassion 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 nothing else matters and that is how you should do the practice all the other things are uh, again a uh, fringe benefits to that thank you so much i think that's a fabulous uh, talk uh, so many important practical tips and uh, much appreciable it's like uh, we usually think inside the ot but i think 99% of the work for an orthopedic should be outside like uh, all this very important message of yours of pampering and then nurturing the patient which is most important so these important whatever things which you have highlighted are very useful for ourselves to develop into the practice there are so many points which i have learned so thank you for such a excellent and wonderful talk one or yeah. two important yeah, yeah. javar sir wanted to comment yeah uh, uh, sir you are a master you know uh, uh, very very extraordinary communicator and we know that uh, guru already we all know yeah. that uh, you are a master of this my question is that uh, do you do back office brainstorming with your staff to find out that how you could not convert op into ip mm -hmm. of so and so patient so do you do any some yeah. uh, some meeting or something absolutely sir excellent question for my is a lot of my counselors or registrars or fellows they get surprised why this guy who sees 150 patients a day is bothered about one patient who has walked out of the opd and i get let us say because they wait for prolonged times that is the one of the biggest bottlenecks in my life but because of my standing or whatever luck i have with my outcomes they wait don't mind waiting to grow out but once in a while once in a week it happens one guy stands up and gives all gali to the receptionist and walks out and then my counselor will come and say so and so walked out sir let us not bother i am just stop my whole opd and get that guy's phone number from the receptionist and catch him before he exits the car park i go out of the room and express my profound apologies almost shorter than touching his feet i go to such a length and that gives my team the platform on which they have to work so every patient is important whether it is rural or urban every patient is important for our people so that's how i do that and sometimes my counselors get choices of gallies from me if they cannot take care of the patient that's what it is yeah. 
So I have one question. Uh, how do you convert a patient uh, whose relative or friend has a bad result from a knee replacement? He has personally seen that bad result very closely and now he is for knee replacement. How do you convince those? Bad result with me or with somebody else? Uh, any, it could be anybody. Oh, it could be anybody. It's very easy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right. No, no. I like say... if, 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 if I say, when, when the people were asked, wow, Atal Bihari Bajpayee, even after the operation, he is limping. And yeah. the answer was, because he wasn't operated by me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's... Uh, no, no. There are two options. One is if the patient is operated by somebody else, I do not under belittle the other guy. I say that complications can happen to anybody, even it happens to me. I learned it from my boss, Dr. Sancheti from Pune. The first thing is you be humble and you say it can happen to me also. It doesn't mean that it happens to everyone. So that is the important point. Number one, I tell that and I brush them. If somebody pushes me into corner, I refuse to answer or acknowledge the technical incompetence of the other surgeon, however bad the x-ray looks like. I said, no, 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 I think Gaurava, the question is different. The, the question, question is, the so many people of the knee surgeries are not doing so well. Correct, sir. Exactly. There is no complication. Absolutely. There is no Correct. complication. Yeah, I understand. But, but, but they are not that very happy. Correct, sir. Exactly. So what is the question is, how yes. do you convince them? That's right. Yeah. Fortunately, I got two, three gadgets in my armamentarium, which as I said, these are called white lies. They won't harm anybody, but they are not truths. They're called white lies. So in my armamentor, I say that there are 20% of the patients are unhappy, but in my practice, I got 10 types of implants. So I will pick up one implant which suits you, which is which is absolute uh, untruth, untruth. But I give them a confidence that as though I'm having a multiple inventory, which suits them, number one. Number two, thanks to the robot, I will say the robot will give extra needed precision so that I won't go wrong and you are there nine out of ten times. So these are some of the window dressings and our yeah. white lights which have to be there. Otherwise you cannot win the battle. <laughs> As I said, yeah. one of my consultants in England used to sit next to the patient preoperatively and first thing he will tell, you might die on the table. <laughs> if you say that, nobody will come to you here. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Shantan, you wanted to come in? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Guruva, that was a wonderful presentation, needless to say. My question is, has your show of humility or real concern ever... Somebody's... Please go ahead. Has your show of concern and genuine bother for the patient ever backfired on you? Oh, yes. Many times. Many times. But that won't put me back from showing that again and again. One guy, I'll tell you one minute, one guy has been uh, advised amputation for a compound, the compartment syndrome of tibia in another hospital. I got him into my hospital. Six months, I nourished him as he's my son-in-law. I took him to the military hospital in my Mercedes car for an high barrier oxygen therapy and did not take any money. I tried to get him a job in a local government office. This guy went to the television and said that Guru already wanted to kill me on four televisions, one after another, he spoke. But that did not put me off. I said, thanks to you. And that's it. We, the humanity can never be undermined because of a sporadic incident of these unfaithful patients. Wonderful, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Manoj. We move on. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. Nidhi Tandasar for his uh, talk on 10 mantras, uh, how he handles various tricky situations uh, which uh, usually arises in our OPD practices. So let us learn from the experiences of Dr. Tanna, sir. I am going to talk about the solo practice into the place which we large majority of us are working and I'm going to basically only concentrate on that solo practice, solo clinic, and not like the way Dr. Gaurava Reddy, who has a who has a really retinue of people, and he can handle it. Now here I am going to talk about this solo practice. Two or three cabins, X-ray machines, chemists, sterile injections, dressings, all these things all the time. 
and all this is the presumed to be there in the efficient OPD. I'm not going to deal with it because I think we all know about it very well. Stay in a rented house, but buy office earliest in one location for because that is going to be the one location for your whole auto life. Because as I said today also, I have been practicing at one place for last 50 years and the patient doesn't remember the name Dr. Tanna. He says, wo Chani Road Station ke saamne jo hai na, hatti ka raktar usutar jane ka hai. So I feel that that, that, that that is very important that location of the place, even if it is a solo place, it should be there all the time. So otherwise, quite a lot of people, they go on jumping after two years, they practice here, second year, they go there and they, they are the ones who are going to be the losers. I mean, early practice, that means you have been settling down, never keep a waiting room empty. If not enough patients, take time to examine till the OPD fills up. Go out for 15-20 minutes for a query emergency and take a walk. This is where, because the patients, when they come to an empty, empty waiting room, something doesn't click with them. Now, appointment if given, give two or three. Now, even today, this is what I practice with the, it's not an empty waiting room, but still today, give two or three appointments at the same time. It serves two purposes. If one or two patients drop out or they are late, because in Bombay it happens again and again, traffic jams and all. Your time is not wasted. Initially, I tried it out that the patient doesn't have to wait at all. But I think it didn't work out for me. And so I want the people to be there. So as soon as my, my patient goes away, I want to have another patient whom I can see. I don't want to just waiting around. And the waiting room is filled up. It is very, very necessary for the other people to come to get impressed. There, is one of the, there are many ophthalmic surgeons I know who operate 5, 7, 10 cataract cases in a single day. And they may not operate for the rest of the week a single case. And he, on that one day when he operates 10 cases, and he goes on increasing the days of surgery as the volume builds up. But never one or two cases in a day. Patients get impressed by him when he operates 10 cases and they start calculating more money. Doctor, more money the doctor makes more efficient he is considered. I told the patient next time, one of the patients next time I saw him, I gave him the investigation and I told him, next time you do this investigation ready and take an appointment and come back. And very mischievously he is asking me, sir, would it make a difference? I didn't understand that what he was trying to say. Yes, sir. Then I suddenly realized that the fellow was waiting for one and a half hour to two hours to come inside my cabin. So he was asking me that he had taken the appointment at 6 o'clock and he entered inside at 7.30. So he was asking me, would it make a difference? Very, very jokingly he was asking me. And then I jokingly I told him that probably if you are not waiting for such a long time, you would never come back to me. You will go somewhere else. And he confessed his yes, sir. What you say is right. And download these videos to explain to the patient. This is a disc. This is a disc here. Download that. And here is the STO. These are all available on the net. You can download them. Here is the here is the surgery for the trigger finger. Now this is very impressive. You can download them and you can show them. I have a separate thing for the knee operation for the hip for the spine things, for the for the general things and all. And here is one software, which I see orthopedic patient education application. This is an excellent video. And and if you can see, this is the one I think it, I had downloaded from the net. I don't know whether it is now available or is not available. This is the one which is very good. And you can see here, all anatomy conditions, treatment. Say if I do the treatment and I want to show the knee arthroplasty without with cement and here in the whole video moves and it tells you everything this is the early phase of arthritis now the arthritis has increased you can see now it has become very severe and once it has become very severe and it is, goes on becoming increasing and increasing so it is never ending story and once you do this once you do this now here is the one how i am going to do your knee replacement and the same thing can be done for spines and everything. This one thing 
it contains so many things which you can download and then you give them the exercise chart this is asian chart which is there as you can see and in this chart you give him this exercise and probably if you want to be slightly more cunning no for you do you don't do this exercise for you all other exercises are good but this exercise is not good anywhere you can just put it across that's good enough but your exercise chart that means you have planned it out you have done it all this has been downloaded from the net but still have it and did it and not any exercise it 10 minutes two times a day and the patient feels very comfortable and he, so many of them they want to ask you sir will you please will you please be there when i am seeing it so you see it there is no problem waiting room keep those medals when you deliver a talk or chair a session for early career you can put even the mbbs certificates dnb certificates and everything patient gets impressed they can and when they are waiting for the patient to, to enter the doctor's cabin and they see all the certificates and they consider them as medals now here it is this is my clinic where all those these are only the ones when i go to nagpur they give me a small takta and they are innumerable of them afterwards you really throw them out but still you keep them in your clinic and they go on say ha ah, sir hum bhi ab oh you had come to kanpur sir i had been to kanpur to so, kanpur mein aap kidhar rahe the ab you don't know where the hell you had been and all but that is very important to them and you go on doing this patient will be happy call patients who have developed complication at a different time i think jawar has already mentioned it or if they come in a routine opd smart nurse or a secretary should take them in a separate cabin immediately before they can talk to the other patient this is very very important because i think you like somebody like me cannot call them at different time because i have the same thing they come all the time every time in that and nurse knows about it this is the one who had a complication so immediately they will be taken out they have been treated dressed and everything whatever it is after last question of the patient is satisfactory the answer answer every question once sitting there any more questions and leave the cabin and go to the other cabin money to be collected by the nurse or the secretary there will be less bargaining time and the time is saved otherwise they will go on asking questions again and again without any purpose so and i have a practice i used to initially collect the money at the end of the day and i felt that i wouldn't be able to remember how many patients i have seen and all so every patient in the cash is collected take money after every patient you will forget later and if you keep all that money probably the money which she collects in a day for a busy practitioner is far more than what her full month salary and do not unnecessarily tempt her i think there is a very good story there was a sufi said he went to the masjid wearing a new footwear and when he came out that footwear was stolen and everybody around are kisne 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 goya kisne goya kisne goya kon leke gaya and that sufi said very beautifully he said that i think i have done a i have done an error i should not have i should not have kept this new shoes here because i have tempted one person to be tara same thing is in the clinic don't let 30 40 50 whatever is there your collection with that secretary who is not in that so do not tempt her unnecessarily so i feel this collecting money after every patient the nurse comes and gives you i find it it is a much better practice record keeping is ideal in india in a solo practice now now there is a computer so it is very good but i have my very peculiar experience this was before the computer days i used to have every patient's records and i had an income tax rate in that income tax rate they went through those patient records and they want they had the addresses some of the addresses who were there and they phoned them up and that is the time onwards i even if i keep a record of a patient i don't keep their phone number i don't keep their uh, anything anything there because i think unnecessarily they will be arrested and this is very very important those who are busy practitioners who are potential uh, income tax rate this is very important and i realized it at that time that whatever you want to do but make x x number of receipts every day and that is very important in opd 
because if you are seeing 30 patients, you can't say 25 of them were free. It cannot happen. So you got to make the receipts of them because you are expected to make the receipts. What receipt you make, it is your choice. But this is how you'll have to make it. Orthopedic surgeons write notes. Now, I used to give them type notes earlier when there was a low volume. Okay, but the volume increases, type notes will delay the patient departure and also at times a displeasure for the delay. Orthopedic surgeon assistant, you do not have to dictate. He just sees you and all what you say is no. That means conservative treatment. He will just write down physiotherapy, analgesic, ding, 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 ding. Surgery, he will also write down that. And when you are explaining him the surgery, he knows everything what you are telling him. You don't have to really dictate them. A secretary or a typist or anything, you will have to dictate them. So I have found that the, another orthopedic assistant fellow he is the best person to write down the notes. And you will edit up the notes. But one thing I always done is I never allow him to take the history. Because to me, the history of a patient is most important. That is where you actually communicate with the patient. Records which is kept with you. You don't have to give every record to the patient. I also keep some of the records with me. Because in those records which you, you keeping it, should write some odd findings. Like the patient is too demanding, too legal minded, do not ex accept for surgeries. And a relative so and so who did this DKR in a pencil, you write down. And you, most of the time, I do not remember the money, how much I have quoted. Because he comes after 10 days, again he will ask you that. And you don't know how much you have quoted. So probably there is some code work, you write it down in your, uh, in your book or anywhere. So that it will be useful to you. Your differential diagnosis, possible their diagnosis. On the patient's record, you cannot give all that. Thing. But on your own notes, which you are keeping it, you, you can keep them so that you will not miss it out next time. Otherwise, if it comes as a second time visit, it is basically going to be in like the hospital city, all will happen. So that's the reason why you have to be very careful. <coughs> you are out of an odd diagnosis, you got to keep it there. When patient comes back, all these things will be very helpful. If your quoted amount is the reason he is not getting operated and you want to do it for the interest of yours or for whatever it is, <coughs> how I, I handle is I tell a trusted nurse who is there. Patient goes out and she talks to him. operation Then it's about They say, you, you must not have told the doctor sir, that you want to do it in general world. Because he must have bought it for the, for the twin sharing room. So if you do in a general ward, it will be cheaper. Oh, I saw it, yeah. So then again, patient comes back and if she can convert quite a few patients for me who otherwise have not come for the surgery, who will not come for the surgery. Because I, in my hoity-toity, whatever amount I have quoted, so many people wouldn't even ask that. Yes, sir, can you make it less or anything? And that is what I feel. This nurse is very useful to me. And she does this thing for me and then she is quoted and then she comes and tells me, sir, he is willing to do X, X amount. And then when he comes, you, you can really do the thing. So I feel this is very important. If your old patient who has come with the new patient, even if you do not remember, generally you hardly ever remember, see the limb of the operated old patient and appreciate it. If keep, keeping records for the presentation, take a new x-ray free. It will help your presentation in the video of the patient. Socialize for a short time before seeing the new patient. Yes, I have. Patient will always tell you that. Give some concession as that is your favorite patient who has come along with him. And the old patients last. GPs never last. GPs will always go on changing. So today at my age of 82, 99% of the patients who come are all the old patients. All the GPs have disappeared. They have obviously been for whatever reasons it is. And that's the reason I feel that if at all, old patients will last. And last but not the least, I feel this is very important which I want to talk. Enjoy OPD. But the last suggestion is do not obsess with the patients and go on and on and on till early morning as some of my friends do it. Sumteo, mere bhai. There is only one life that name and fame and money will not last. 
at the end of my busy life and in the lockdown, I only remember the holidays, the good friends, the hobbies and the relatives whom I have been able to be with you. I do, and I realize that you do not need much of a money in life. So please, my sincere urge, those who are really working hard and only working, please, life is not orthopedics. Orthopedics is only one part of your life. Do not make it the only life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tanna, sir, for such a masterly tips. And uh, again, uh, the pinpoint, 10 points which everybody will carry home. Now, I will request Dr. R.M. Chandak, sir, uh, for uh, panel discussion. Yeah, uh, I, I think now we are ready for panel discussion. And uh, can Dr. Jawahar Jaitwa put up uh, the slide he has prepared for a panel discussion, sir? Oh, yes, yes. I just yeah. started yeah. that. So, I mean, it is it is about the phraseology. Yeah. So this this discussion and the whole thing is arranged for phraseology. And let me initiate the discussion. How to tell a patient that he has osteoarthritis? So is it ghutna ghisgya? So all would be having a rapid fire. So asking from Dr. Guruva Reddy, sir, how do you uh, suggest to a patient that osteoarthritis is there? No, I use the model and I tell them that uh, he um, um, and I compare that with a very tender coconut. I'll say that it has become a dry coconut because the analogies are very important for the patients to understand. And now that coconut is peeling off, so now we got to give a new cushion for you. Okay. 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 Jetwa, sir, how do you convince, how do you tell the patient about osteoarthritis? As I say that, uh, you know, you are using this fan or motor or whatever for so many years. Because you have used it. But very important point is that they say that, can you cure it? So I tell them, okay, do you go to any doctor to say that your blood pressure will be cured or your diabetes will be cured? No. The moment you stop medicine, blood pressure will be again high. So we can maintain. So never ever osteoarthritis can be cured. It can be maintained. And these are the ways we can maintain it. Rajiv Raj, uh, sir, uh, what is your yes. physiology for osteoarthritis? So I would start like saying, I have a lot of work in my life. I have a lot of work on my life. Now the time has And... Uh, uh, जैसे सफेद बाल काले नहीं होते गए हुए बाल वापस नहीं आते घिसा हुआ जो घुटना है उसका तो कोई रास्ता नहीं है मैं अपने घर बाल में वो डाई भी लगाऊंगा तो दो हफ्ते के बाद तीन हफ्ते के बाद में फिर वाइट हो जाता ऐसे ही आप दवाई बंद करेंगे तो गाड़ी वहीं पे आ जाएगी मैं सो दैट वे सॉर्ट ऑफ आई फर्स्ट अप्रिशिएट द द पर्सन कि बी यू वर्क वेरी हार्ड and then I say, well, you see, the knee is now bad enough. And if you want to continue working, you go for sure. Uh, Tanna, sir, what is your words for uh, damaged knees or osteoarthritic knees? Yeah, you see, you see my hair, you see. Now, this hair is natural, it's a natural age, so everything happens, right? And it doesn't happen to everyone. It keeps the hair on, it keeps the hair on, it keeps the hair on. Look, it's gone already. It's gone already. अगर जो तुमको हुआ है वो वो भगवान ने दिया है तुमको ये तुम्हारा हड्डी घिस गया है अभी हड्डी घिस गया उसका क्या करेगा उसमें थोड़ा 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 फायदा दे सकते हैं मगर ज्यादा घिसेगा तो बिना ऑपरेशन ठीक नहीं होने वाला है अनदर बिग चैलेंज टू एक्सप्लेन पेशेंट इज अबाउट एवियन एवेस्कुलर नेक्रोसिस सो हाउ इन फिजियोलॉजी मनोज हाउ डू यू एक्सप्लेन इन फिजियोलॉजी द एवियन ओके सो इफ द पेशेंट हैज गॉट एवियन तो वही उनको बताना पड़ता है कि आपका जो हिप जॉइंट का जो बॉल है गोला जो है वो धीरे धीरे खराब हो रहा है जैसे अपनी हड्डी का सा एकदम हार्ड रहती है कॉर्पॉल के समान वो लेकिन अभी धीरे धीरे उसके अंदर का खून प्रवाह कम होके वो हड्डी अभी सॉफ्ट नरम बनते जा रही है यानी अभी नींबू की तरह हो रही है यानी अभी आप उसके बाद चलोगे कुछ करोगे तो वो पचक जाएगी या उसके अंदर प्रेशर आने के कारण फिर आपको दर्द रहेगा तो धीरे धीरे ही आपका जो गोला है वो खराब हो रहा है सो सच काइंड ऑफ फिजियोलॉजी एट डिफरेंट स्टेजेस कुड एक्सप्लेन जेठवा सर हाउ डू यू एक्सप्लेन एवियन 
Uh, I'm going to show in my slide, but what okay. I say usually, uh, let me, let me uh, just tell that slide also, that one of the branches somehow has stopped getting nutrition. So your whole head is not, um, uh, I mean, a problem. This is a part of your head is not getting supply. So I tell them that you have looked so, so many trees. So sometimes you see one or two branches, which is dried up. And secondly, I always tell them that when you are playing a table tennis, you have got a good ball. But if it is flattened, by whatever reason, you cannot play it. You, you have to change it. So now your ball is flattened. So now it is a third stage. So it will not roll very well. So you have to go for a change. So okay. like that. Yeah. Dr. Guru, what is your winning statement on avian? I, I, I had a bit of humor wherever I can. Yeah. I will say that uh, God is an engineer, but he is a good thing. So, 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 that's why. And there are three reasons. Number one is alcoholic, steroids. Suppose if he is an alcoholic already, I will put him into the blame game. Or if there's a girl, of course, I can't say alcoholic. And I'll probe them whether they use any steroids. And then they'll, uh, if there is nothing else there, aapko to achanak ho gaya, idiopathic. And so whatever is done, ultimately, the treatment is the same. And then I'll explain the treatment. Rajiv, sir, uh, what is your phraseology for AVN? That is I, I, I use the same table tennis ball example. That it just, like a dent inside, the femoral head table tennis ball kitra and then you cannot play the game. So coincidentally, um, although we have never discussed uh, Jawahar and me, but we have the same yes. example, the yes. same yes. friend you are. Right. Okay. Manoj, do you have any questions for all the panelists? Can I can I okay. just say yes, sir. Yes. I tell them the heart attack is for heart attack. Yeah. No, I was about to सबको हार्ट अटैक नहीं आता है किसी को हार्ट अटैक आता है और वो जो हार्ट अटैक आता है उसके अंदर अपने आप के स्टेट कर दिया तो फिर से नॉर्मल हो जाते हो तो तुम्हारा जस्ट शुरुआत हुआ है हार्ट अटैक का अगर हम कोरिंग करेंगे तो उम्मीद है कि तुम पहले जैसा नॉर्मल हो जाएगा अगर अगर ज्यादा so <laughs> exactly heart attack is And that, the, that is also the phrase I use them. That, that is the reason heart attack will come. You will say that this picture will come after we will do it. Heart attack will come after we will do it. So this is why this is heart attack. So this is the beginning of the picture. Now we have to do it with the core decompression. So I hope that it will be possible. Thank you so much. Okay. So Manoj, you can take up yeah, the next question. Yeah. It's like uh, we can come up with a situation in OPD where uh, you are having a uh, good amount of patients waiting in the OPD and then suddenly emergency comes up. So uh, you haven't planned that uh, surgery or one or two hours in between that uh, running OPD. So uh, how would you uh, uh, tell the uh, staff or the patients ahead as to how will you tack tackle this situation? I will act. I will act as though I am acting in a teleserial. I go out into the OPD where all the patients are waiting, stand in the center, and put all the agony on my face, and uh, <laughs> show my agony, and will explain with the animated discussion that there is a patient on the table who is going to die unless I go there. So please bear with me. My secretary will give you coffee, tea, and sandwiches. So please. That's it. Yeah, you will directly convey. That's a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, I would have the the reception staff who would uh, um, who would sort of announce my in unavailability, having to go to the uh, emergency surgery, and then um, either a if it is got going to be a longer time surgery, in such a situation. Um, a alternative appointment in, is immediately organized. But those who want to wait have to wait. I do not have the system of offering tea, coffee. And I think probably it's a good idea that uh, of Guruva that one should go individually personally. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, properly conveying message yeah. to the uh, OPDs. Yeah. How, does Ashish, how does Ashish manage this? Ashish. Again, how much emphasis yeah. I put it on that? And let us say, as uh, Rajiv said, 
out of the 30 to 40, 10 patients went off, saying that they will come some other day. I will ask the secretary to take all the 10 phone numbers. They will be anywhere in the books. And on the way back home in the car, I will make call either audio or video to all the 10 members. Okay. Explaining a personal apology, and then they will come back. Good. Good point. I mean, fortunately, I'm not that busy that we, I have 30 to 40 patients waiting, but let's say around 20 patients are waiting. And uh, uh, the way it works in our center is that there is no emergency that you have to, you know, leave everything right now and go. You certainly have about 20 odd minutes or so. So in that, I generally screen who needs to be seen. We have registrars who can start going and managing the emergency, whatever it is, an open fracture or a vascular injury. And uh, then as Dr. Reddy suggested, so I pass on the message and also tell them very politely that such and such a thing has happened. The surgery is going to be expected to take about two hours or so. At the end of which I will, all the patients will be seen whatever time of the day it is going to be. Let's say it's about eight in the night. I will see them. However, if they want to go and come back, uh, they can do that. In the meanwhile, there is also my resident. I, I don't address them as resident. I just said that there are my colleagues here. So uh, we actually all also have other consultants who are op, uh, doing OPD at the same time. So choice is given to them whether they want to see other members of the team or my associates. So some of them who are follow-ups, like they just want to show the vitamin D reports yeah, or maybe yeah, a follow-up yeah. X-ray after a tibia nailing. Yes, they are quite to okay to do that. Yeah. 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 How, how do? Yeah. Kapre sir, how do? Kapre sir, how do you manage your time management or what are your tips for time management when you are getting delayed with the schedule of surgery? Well, this is uh, fairly often, but uh, I wish I had the same uh, facility for offering tea and coffee, but we don't do that. But what I offer them surely is that uh, all exactly what Dr. Gurova Reddy has said, we have their numbers, those who go away, call them back again, give my apologies personally. We have an arrangement whereby we can give them an alternate consultation through my assistant, I always put my assistant a little bit higher on the pedestal so the patient don't feel that they are neglected. Okay. I think everything else exactly, I will take home all the little tips which Dr. Reddy has given. Um, I think that sums up my way. The delay in coming down from OT is again apologized in public by going to the OPD section, standing up in the middle of them saying that I had a very difficult case. I didn't expect that case to get on so late or so long. But unfortunately, and they would say, Ye kisi ke bhi ho sakta tha. and then I come down and start the OPD without mm -hmm. a genuine uh, sort of uh, anguish or uh, apologies. But yes, of course, we have to go and tell the patient that yes, I was late and I'm sorry for it. Yeah. Yetwa, sir, can you put up your first question? Uh, yes, yes, I just go fast yeah. with all the points. Yeah. So we can just finish up the points which can be there. So number one comes is, you are late in attending patients. So I say, pain doesn't come with appointment, Baba. You know, the pain cannot have appointment. When there's too much of pain somewhere, I have to rush there. So it is a situation where you cannot give appointment to the pain. Pain starts anytime. Second is, when will be I okay? So there's a very common question. So you say, don't say weeks or date. State next appropriate festival. Holi ke baad acha ho jayega. That is going to give you much, much good impression rather than giving the exit date. Dealing with delayed union or distal third tibia. As a patient where healing is always delayed, in our Gujarati, what we say, Narano Ghan Tadano Cha Banne Akra. That means if you have got a fracture of the lower third of tibia, we know this is going to take six months. And Tadano Cha means something like a, you know, have prepared a tea. So the last part of the tea is going to be very strong. So they know and they will laugh with you and they will immediately agree, yes, this is something which is Naranoka. So if they know that it's going to take time. Patients often we say that you are going to charge more because you have HIV, HBSG and COVID-19. And they say, why you are charging more? So the explanation is that it's like a venom of the snake. It does not harm itself but it harms other when it bites. So you are having a venom in your body. It's not going to give any trouble with you, but it, it, if it bites us, then it's going to give trouble. For that reason, it's going to have a more charges. Then sudex dystrophy is very important. When patient gets this problem, 
दे सिंपली आस्क वट आई एम सफरिंग फ्रॉम ये क्या हो गया साहब सो आई हैड सी सिमिलर क्वेश्चन इन एडिनबर और ट्रोमा कोर्स एंड आई सेट दर हाउ डू यू एक्सप्लेन टू द पेशेंट इट्स वेरी सिंपल यू कैन से सम हाउ बॉडी अंडरस्टूड द पार्ट एज नो मोर यूजफुल सो इट हैज स्टॉप गिविंग ऑल न्यूट्रिशन सो बॉडी नीज टाइम टू री एजुकेट नर्वस सिस्टम ये हो जाएगा ये छह महीने से एक बरस तक टाइम लगेगा इसको लग गया कि काम का नहीं है इसलिए थोड़ी देर लग गई है सो यू कैन अकॉर्डिंगली यू कैन गिव दिस एनोलॉजी आई डो नॉट हैव फुल फंक्शन लाइक ऑन नॉर्मल साइड दैट इज अ वेरी कॉमन यू नो एट द एंड दे विल से नो इट्स नॉट लाइक अदर साइड आई हैव एवरीथिंग गुड बट नॉट फुली नॉर्मल सो वट आई से वी आर रिपेयर माई डियर वी आर नॉट मैन्युफैक्चर गॉड इज ग्रेट यू नो वी आर बेसिकली रिपेयरिंग वॉट गॉड हैज गिवन so repair is a repair it cannot be like what is the company made then please give medicine that has no reaction this is a very common thing the patient is going to ask give me medicine that has no reaction so i say i just cannot you suggest you any road to go back to your home no road without accident you are asking me that on which road i should go back to my home each road can have an accident i cannot tell you but yet all roads are open people use government there is talk so it is something like you have to leave it to the god you have to travel and see if there is an accident it's okay so we do not know so that is the way you try to explain will there be any complications this is a very common thing now how do i explain i simply say that we are thinking of a badrinath tour and the travel agent says that yes everything will be fine it is going to be wonder wonderful but you know all the newspaper headlines that you may face breakdown there can be delay there can be accident now think of do you want to go to pilgrimage jana hai kya kedarnath ka darshan karna hai na to chhodiye hoga wo hoga but indirectly you are telling that everything can happen so it's something like you have to prepare them i think it is united why to wait now there is a very common thing when you ask for the second plaster or something we are want to wait he feels like that all movements are there so what do you say while settling cement slab it looks very solid dusre din lagta hai ki cement to ho gayi achhi aur phir bhi wo contractor bolega water it till it bears some solidification so we need time for the body to solidify it you look like it's good but it requires some time to considerate how much rest after removal of implants which is very common sab wo utne din phir se mujhe so jana padega to tum nikal dega to phir se wo takleef nahi ho jayegi wo saliya nikal diya bolt bolt nikal diya i tell them when can you use room after removing centering or scaffolding for construction ye jo tumne wo jo scaffolding lagaya hai uske baad dhaba wagera bhar gaya phir kya jab cement set ho gayi to usko nikalna hai what we have done is only scaffolding हिलिंग तो हो गया नेचर से सो डोंट वरी यू कैन यूज इट इमीजिएटली सो दैट इज हाउ यू ट्राई टू वॉट शुड आई ईट फॉर फास्ट हिलिंग वेरी कॉमन क्वेश्चन एंड आई ऑलवेज टेल दैम गाय का घी का शीरा ले लो सो यू टेल समथिंग विच इज न्यूट्रिशियस इन योर एरिया विथ अ गुड रेसिपी गुड फूड आइटम रादर देन टेलिंग हिम टेक अ गुड फ्रूट्स एंड कोकोनट्स एंड दिस एंड दैट यू ट्राई टू गिव अ गुड रेसिपी What, uh, on this, yeah, just sir, one uh, point on this interruption. Uh, most of the Indian patient have a psyche that rice is something which leads to pus formation. So, how do you convince them, and how do you tell them, or what do you? It's simply that you say the whole South India takes rice. We don't get so many patients. वो तो सब बातें हैं किसी को ये और किसी को होता है जो जिसको भी लगाना लगा दो जो होने वाला है मैं नहीं जानता तुम नहीं जानते God जानता है. Tanna sir, what would you say on rice or brinjal or something like that, or some? Or do you give them the scientific advice of taking a nutritious diet? Guru sir, you are you are uh, hilarious. Wait, wait, wait! What about about what 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 about about rice and brinjal etc. leading to pus formation? <laughs> so, what are your hilarious comments for them? Any any? I will tell that. Uh, If you uh, do uh, what do you call? I don't say that in a very crude term, but he says that if you have a family life on moonlight, you will have a baby boy, and if you have a mother, say you will have a baby girl like that. It is not like that. It is a complete uh, uh, myth. Myth. <laughs> it's a it's a myth. You eat whatever nutritious you yeah, want. Yeah. Whatever is that? Yes, sir. It's a load okay. of. Yeah, okay. Sir, so please go ahead. Uh, so now, 
कैन फ्रैक्चर नॉट यूनाइट फास्ट दस अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब आप तो तीन महीने बोल रहे हो एक दिन एक महीने में हो जाए ऐसा कुछ करो ना सो वो डू ऐसे नो मेडिसिन टू डिलीवर बेबी इन फाइव मंथ्स वो किसी को बोलो कि कहीं से भी दवाई लेकर आए पांच महीने में वो डिलीवरी हो जाए नो मेडिसिन कैन रिमूव द सूचर्स इन थ्री डेज भैया ये ह्यूमन बॉडी है ये गाय या भैंस या वो डॉग नहीं है सबके लिए अलग अलग प्रॉपर्टी है हमारे लिए प्रॉपर्टी है नाइन मंथ्स में ही बच्चा होने वाला है तो ये दोनों थिंग दैट इट विल बी इन वन मंथ इट विल बी हील्ड इट टेक्स इट्स ओन टाइम सो यू हैव टू वेट फॉर टू मंथ्स और थ्री मंथ्स सो लाइक दैट आई ऑलवेज टेल दैम देन वाई दिस फ्रैक्चर इज नॉट यूनाइटेड and other fractures have united which is a very common thing because ab isko sabko acha ho gaya ye ye paw mein acha ho ye paw mein nahi ho polytrauma hota hai ya he is comparing with the neighbors so i simply tell them variation in growth of series of asopallav dekho yahan jo sab asopallav laga hai sabko waisa hi lagaya tha sabki length same hai care same hai season same hai koi lamba hua koi nahi lamba hua yahi to atak gaya hai science yahi to atak gaya wohi to hum bhi soch rahe hain कि सबको छीक दिया तो यहां से क्यों ये नहीं हुआ होता है वो तो हमने सब जगह देखा है ऐसे जैसे आसोपलों में भी होता है सब ट्री एकदम बड़े नहीं होते कोई होते कोई नहीं होते ऐसा है तुम्हारा सो लाइक वाइज यू कैन एक्सप्लेन वाई सो बिग डिफरेंस इन चार्जेस विच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पीपल विल से कि तुम तो बहुत पैसे बता रहे हो तो कम क्यों है और उनको उनको ये जानना है कि इफ यू आर चार्जिंग लेस विल इट बी अस रिजल्ट तो आई ऑलवेज एक्सप्लेन There is a big difference between tickets for local bus and business class flight to Bombay. देखो भैया तुम business class में जाओगे तो वो तो कम से कम आठ दस हजार रुपए की ticket होगी. Local bus में पांच सौ रुपए में जाओगे. जाओगे वहीं. जाओगे मुंबई ही. कोई तुमको नाकुन नहीं भेजने वाला. तो वो change मत करो. वो मुंबई ही जाने वाले हो. But you have to have to see what is the comfort in traveling. So you do not give any impression that it's going to be a substandard result. Result will be best. Then, when will I be fit? Sir, I will be fit when I am good. When I am fit, I will be fit. What will happen? So I simply say that, oh, for fitness, you are fit to discharge. Look, you have discharge for fitness. Just like you go to the house for two or three weeks, you will have full fitness. You will be able to go to the room. And then, after two or three months, you will be able to go out and go there. It depends on fitness. And then, if you say, no, I have to be a goalkeeper फुटबॉल टीम के लिए तो फिर एट मंथ होने वाले हैं तो फिटनेस तो आज ही है अब तुम जा रहे हो घर वही तो फिटनेस है सो टेल देम दैट द फिटनेस डिपेंड्स अ लॉट ऑन व्हाट यू वांट सो दैट इज द ओनली वे टू शो एनोलॉजी ऑफ डेली वर्क देन व्हाई नॉन यूनियन व्हाई ऑल फेल्ड ये इसमें क्यों हड्डी क्यों नहीं जुड़ी दैट इज अ वेरी कॉमन क्वेश्चन सो आई से मोस्ट सेटल इन यूएस बट अ फ्यू कम बैक ड्यू टू मल्टीपल एंड अननोन रीजन सर इनके लड़के को भेजा अमेरिका तो वापस आ गया वो बस सबको लग जाता है वो मालूम ही नहीं है क्या क्या इसमें रीजन होते हैं क्या क्या होता है रिसर्च इज गोइंग ऑन हम उसी सच में हुए हैं और बहुत सारी कॉन्फ्रेंस चल रही है आई मीन यू तो जानते हो ना भगवान को कौन जान सकता है ऐसा है लाइक वाइज यू ट्राई टू शो दैट देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी विल इम्प्लांट्स रिक्वायर रिमूवल विच इज अ वेरी कॉमन थिंग आई एडअपर यस सर तुम शादी किया है किसी का किसी का मैरिज अच्छा चलता है किसी का मैरिज अच्छा नहीं चलता है और किसी को तुम बदनाम कर सकता है तुम्हारा ऊपर ही है तो हड्डी का जुड़ने का भी तुम्हारे ऊपर है हम शादी तो करा देते हैं मगर हड्डी जुड़ना तुम्हारे लोग के ऊपर है तो वो जुड़ता नहीं हड्डी शादी चलता नहीं है तो वो आपका ही कुछ कुछ उसमें होता है इसलिए शादी चलता नहीं है आई थिंक मदन कापरे सर वु रियलाइजिंग मारवा सर यूज टू एक्सप्लेन इट ब्यूटिफुली He hmm. used to say, "Cellular response, uh, failure of cellular response to throw callus." In that one word, I picked up the sentence, and that was a very good sentence. Failure of cellular response to throw callus. I think that also yes. is a very good word. Yes. So sometimes it happens that they will ask you, "Will implants require removal?" I say, only if it is hurting your body or it is hurting your mind. अब ये सलिया तुम्हारे दिमाग में चल गया तो वो तो निकाल नहीं पड़ेगा. अभी जब वहां है तो जरूरत नहीं है एंड सेकंड थिंग इज वेरी लाइटर नोटिस अभी यार देखो ना वो तो बीस हजार रुपए का तो डाला है अभी थोड़ा प्राइस तो बढ़ने दो फिर निकालेंगे बेच देंगे यू नो यू जस्ट मेक अ जॉक ऑफ इट बट यू नॉट अगर उसका भाव 
भाव सोना जैसा होगा तो निकाल दें अगर आप आपको नहीं देंगे हम रख लेंगे हम देन देर आर ओनली वन और टू स्लाइड्स प्लीज चार्ज रिजनेबल आई डो नॉट है सब लोग बोलते हैं इन अ सोलो प्रेड इज वेरी कॉमन सो आई टेल देम गवर्नमेंट्स गाइडलाइन जो पूरी जो पार्लियामेंट बैठी हुई ना दिल्ली में द गवर्नमेंट गाइडलाइन फॉर रिजनेबल चार्जेज इज एज पर मेडिक्लेम उसमें फिक्स होता है कि डॉक्टर जेठवा को इतने से ज्यादा पैसा नहीं देना तो मेडिक्लेम बना तो सबसे रिजनेबल है हाँ तुमको मैं रिजनेबल से कम करके दे सकता हूँ लेकिन जो रिजनेबल है वो मेडिक्लेम वाला है बिकॉज देर आर सो मेनी पीपल हुए डिसाइडेड दिस चार्जेज नॉट हंड्रेड परसेंट रिकवरी ये सब बोलेंगे सब बराबर है लेकिन पूरा सौ टका तो नहीं हुआ कुछ कुछ तकलीफ है मैं बोलता हूँ बाबा somebody has stolen 1 lakh rupees from your pocket with a very hard time police has tried to recover 99000 abhi wo 1000 ke liye kya rote ho yaar to 99000 to mil gaya na to fir khush ho na and this is so effective so effective that every time i have seen their uh, response they are always happy and they always laugh with you and they will and as well as, as far as vascular necrosis we already talked about i show them this picture the some of the things are not and i show them this picture it is a flattened ball and the last one is osteomyelitis they say sab ye ye to first nikalta hi rehta hai to 5 baras ho gaye to usme isme kya main karu and will it be cured any time so i tell them it's like a ink absorbed by the chalk ye jo chalk hai wo tum sahi mein dal doge to absorb ho gayi ab bologe nikal do kaise nikale ye puri absorb ho gayi hai ये बैक्टीरिया पूरी जगह चले जाता है इट्स लाइक अ टर्माइट एंड टेरोरिस उनको लगता है कि उसको सबको मार दिया लेकिन वो कभी इरेटिंग फिर से वो कहीं से कहीं से आ जाएंगे तो ये एक लिमिटेशन है साइंस की जब तक कंट्रोल में रखते ठीक है लेकिन वो सब जगह चूस गया है इसलिए पूरा निकालने का तो कोई पॉसिबिलिटी नहीं है सो लाइक वाइज देर आर यू नो एवरीबडी हैज देर ओन वे ऑफ एक्सप्लेन Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I think Rajiv Raj also wanted to share one or two slides. Uh, if you wanted to share, what I was thinking was that we are already probably late. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. if you want to share, yeah, that's fine. So I, I think we had a wonderful discussion and wonderful time. Manoj, you would like to say something, or uh, Ajit, yeah. you would like to ask something. To the panelist. Sir, I think one question we can take up is like uh, the patient is with you either for a replacement or a trauma, and uh, financial problems are there. So uh, how do individually we tackle uh, those patients who want to get operated by you, but because of some financial constraints? So how do you tackle such situations? Like uh, compressor, uh, how do you do those things? ऑपरेटिंग charitable hospital manoj and rajan will understand that uh, uh, tukdoji maharaj cancer hospital is a fairly low cost hospital and uh, okay trusty board it is done free though you guide and guide them to to hospital guruva sir yeah is it of course i got a luxury of my own hospital so i i'll just sometime take them almost free i'll i'll they just pay for the implant and uh, i got a, another charity Uh, which is a new joint one for mother one for other that means okay. if you, yeah if you are operating for your mother you can donate another 30000 to somebody else who can't afford and i'll do the free of service very good very good and that's a good definition wonderful doctor anand shantanu so how do you tackle such yeah uh, basically there are always few patient who will require our services but will have not the money to pay for it yes i had a lesson that no patient should really go away just for the want of money i'll here put put down one thing that many of the patients are in the habit of saying ki are hum to bahut gareeb hai hum to bahut gareeb hai but lekin that patient who is really poor who really doesn't have money will not be even able to say that it is very much apparent to you if you are sensitive enough 
So for those patients, I do it free of cost. Yes. Okay, that's wonderful initiative. Rajiv Rai, sir, your take on? Now in Gujarat, we have uh, uh, what is called my yojana. Although my hospital doesn't do it, but that comes completely free for the patient. So joints in my yojana, I do at another hospital. Um, there is a Vahan Akasmat Yojana, <clears throat> which takes up all the uh, acute trauma cases. So uh, they pay us a bit. Uh, plus, I have got a few donors. So okay. I just have to pass the hat and say, well, you know, we need so much of money for this patient. And I do it free of cost. Okay. So, Ashish, anything in, for, in the corporate hospital? like? Yeah, fortunately, uh, we have a charitable wing where uh, we are we are allowed to uh, as i said uh, forego our charges and we can uh, the management is very supportive in that matter okay. so uh, okay. these generally are cases where uh, i mean we want to do the cases like if it's a challenging case or if it's a complex revision which otherwise wouldn't come to you and you would want to uh, do that surgery you know as a sort of extending your surgical uh, yeah. skills as well so there we forego the charges we write to the management and they generally comply yeah they do so okay. the cost of the implants and the medicines. So I think uh, it is time to end a good program. All good programs ultimately would end. We really had a wonderful time. A lot of good tips from all seniors. Uh, every lecture was really so absorbing. Everyone was glued to the sets. I saw everyone, every faculty members were listening to each other. So that was uh, wonderful. I think it would provide a lot of good tips in patient efficient management in OPD and a lot of those wisdom tips. And the end of this webinar went with a desire of all of us doctors to really work for poor patients. And, and as Dr. Gurwa said, he would do free of cost for them. As Dr. Ashish said, he would do uh, reduce the charges and make it almost free. So all of us are really doing good charitable services. And the eyes of patient tell us that, yes, he's really a needy patient. And all of us take, have taken pride in treating these patients. And I think it is our duty also. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. If someone would like to comment or say some words, I think uh, you are free to express yourself and then we'll close the... And Ashok, um, really thankful to you for providing this platform and uh, you have never stopped <laughs> us for any time. Uh, uh, we have exceeded. Thank you so much for this wonderful facility. Welcome. Yes, I would like to say something. Yeah. And that is... We had so many webinars in this lockdown, but this probably was the best one, the most human one. And I am really grateful for the whole team. I heard all the lectures very intently and I have learned a lot. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Chanda. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Great, 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 great. Yeah, all the lectures were really, really yeah, absorbing. Really yeah, and they were eye opener for us. नहीं नहीं एक और एक और वेबिनार जिसमें और बहुत सारी चीजें बाकी रह गईं यस विल विल टेक अप सो आर्मरी सीरीज विल कंटिन्यू एंड विल डेफिनेटली टेक योर हेल्प फॉर द नेक्स्ट सीरीज एंड विल डिस्कस दोस